Okay, guys, here we are. It's uh, the Educational FA Podcast, the podcast that takes a closer look at your search history. As always, I am the internet's favorite cryptid, aka Manuel, and uh, I'm joined by the internet's least favorite cryptoid. I was going to say, I actually was going to say crypto, but I, I screwed up my word. Um, it's Jordan. It's cat soup. Hi, how's it going? Um, Manuel does not speak for any of us here, so <laughs> don't mind any of the things that he does say. I speak for everyone here. You don't. You speak for the trees, and the trees are dying, so that's not really doing much. Isn't it Earth Day today, or is that yesterday? I think that was yesterday, the 22nd. Oops, fuck the Earth today, then. <laughs> <laughs> go chop down a tree and go stomp on some bushes. Don't um, condone any of this. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do any of that. And joining us tonight, we have we have Danny. Danny, introduce yourself. Very Danny uh, from Drink Talk Learn. Just here tonight to try and remember some things. Remember some things. <laughs> oh, oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Tonight we're gonna well, we're, like every other FA podcast, we're gonna cut it fast and loose, obviously. But we plan to be talking something about Edoguro, um, which is a topic we covered a lot at AJ. Both, I think we even, I don't remember if we ever did a podcast on it. We've definitely done several panels on it. And uh, before the Rona hit, we actually had started a new Edoguro panel because we used to do a history one. But then uh, the last con for like decades, it feels like, was ALA. And at that one, um, we, me and Rachel had created a new one that was like on Edoguro Media. And uh, we were gonna basically we just like would highlight a crap ton of, of like our favorite Edoguro medias and we talk about them. It was actually a much, it was actually kind of similar to what we probably would do at a if we ever did uh, um, a stream of it because it's not so much like going over history. It's more like oh by the way this is Edoguro and this is why we like it. And um, too bad Danny you weren't there at that one. Um, the updated version of the panel yet. That one was funny because at that one, we, um, I wanted, I, I didn't want to focus on games, but I wanted to include some games in there because everyone had always like thrown some ideas at us. I can't remember the name of it right now. Q, if you're in the chat, it's that game you played where like the dude dies and everything oh, he yeah, sees. Oh um, yeah, Anita, yeah. Uh, so people have thrown ideas at us before, but there was this game that Rachel wanted to talk about called Maggots. And it's about like, I actually don't remember what it's about anymore. To be honest, that was like all, all her, but I'll never forget. She sent me this picture that, um, that was like, I think it was, I think it was a girl. And some girl getting her like, she was getting eviscerated basically where like her, her intestines were everywhere. And uh, by the way, I'm gonna ever trickle in. If you have ideas what you want George to draw tonight, start throwing it in there. We'll come back to that. But so this girl was getting eviscerated. Hopefully, don't have him draw this. I'm not gonna try to get banned like this. But she sent me this um, with the message attached to it saying, This is my jam. And uh, I'm pretty sure she just wanted, like, she, she just liked that picture, like the art, you know, maybe she likes that. But I called her out on, on the panel and, it, and she was like, she really, she was, I think she was a little more than just jokingly upset with me. It was great. <laughs> She's like, why did you mention that at the panel that I said that's my jam? Because I think I titled it like, this is Rachel's jam. And she, I don't think I'd, I'd shown her exactly what I was going to put into the panel. And I'm like, so Rachel, why is this your jam? Like, there's a full audience. Oh <laughs> my God. Great. Never trust you. <laughs> you can't tell you anything outside of stream is gonna come on oh I no Memo, Memo forgets about like a lot of the uh manual doesn't have a filter that's what i that's what i've come to realize yes. and if you try to give him a filter he's not gonna put it on he'll probably put it on for a bit and like forget about like, keeping it on when he needs it i'm stupid <laughs> um, I like like there's a speak command. Manual does not speak for anyone other than himself. Fun fact: we don't have the disclaimer here, but one of the reasons I put the, DT, the disclaimer on DTL, uh, I think it's actually on the UPZ as well about like all the views and opinions. Because <laughs> I'm like, just in case I say something really bad, it's like I'll just I won't take the ship down with me. I'll, or not even it's not even just me. Other people have said it. It's funny because I think I somewhat control it live, but other people it's crazy shit. But um, oh, well, we don't have mods, so you know. Yeah, like what, what's a mod? <laughs> what, what, what's the FA podcast? Actually, I'm not gonna lie, I kind of forgot what we did before we did the, before we got to the drawing part. It's been like, it's, it's been a couple weeks since we did this. Chaos. So, <laughs> it's funny because this show did like kind of ha start out having a lot of controlled segments, and then, um, we're still in the period where we're trying to like get back to it. 
So yeah, so uh, we, we had to goes. we had to drop because snacks had left and yeah, um, and, and then uh, th things kind of got a little. It's actually funny, like just just to give I meant I don't think I've ever mentioned this, but just to give a bit of a of a thing about it, the podcast was mostly Snacks' idea, so it's kind of funny that he's gone and we're still continuing on without him. It's like. I'm sure there's like a music reference to this, but like I feel like it's one of those bands where all the original members are gone, but the band's still going. Oh yeah, definitely. So um, yeah, that's, that's us. We're, we're we're the we're the shitty Beatles. That's the <laughs> that's the Queen. That's the Queen band. We're we're, 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 we're Queen with a uh, Queen with Danny. There you go. Because they always add like they always add the vocalist like with whoever the fuck Roger Taylor or fucking. Um, uh, what the fuck's that guy said? The American Idol guy who was there. But anyway, well, I, <laughs> I don't know American Idol. Nobody knows American Idol. So the suggestions what you want Jordan to draw while I try to remember what the fuck. I mean, I, I I know how to continue the show. I just don't remember what segments we had here that would by the time when people put in what we were drawing. Manual is never controlled. Adam Lambert. Yes, that's his name. Um. So for those who don't know what Jordan's drawing right now, he's drawing the Dragonberry. And the reason he's drawing a Dragonberry is because I think it's not been confirmed, and obviously it's not been confirmed at all. Like even by Bacardi, don't I'm not a Bacardi spokesman. Don't don't start tweeting about this. Like I said, it said it's true. Not an advertisement. Um, yeah, <laughs> me me. Yeah, if Bacardi sponsored. wants to sponsor me, then then please hit me up. But uh, <laughs> but um but uh, me and some friends are on suspicion that Bacardi is once again discontinuing Dragonberry rum. And uh, I'm a little upset by that because I love Dragonberry. But also earlier today, or earlier yesterday, actually, I think it was yesterday, um, I discovered that a Dragonberry apparently is not a real thing. Um, it's similar to a blue raspberry. They don't exist. It's just something that people made up. And uh, my mind's kind of blown. And I, look, okay, I'm pretty, oh, let's, let's see. <laughs> What's that Okay, I can't find the bottle. But I'm pretty sure the bottle I'm shows a, lying. Yeah, the bottle shows something on it. Like it shows a fruit. Oh, here it is. Duck speak, isn't it? Yeah, see, oh actually, you know what the bottle shows when I actually really look at it? The bottle shows a dragon fruit, which is the fruit that's on like the cactus fruit. But then it also shows a strawberry. Um what looks like it might be a papaya. Uh I'm not gonna lie, I, I, I think it's an apple. I can't really tell what these other things are behind it, but definitely it, it's a. Oh, it's like, it won't show in the background. But it's definitely a dragon fruit and a strawberry are the first two things up there. So maybe it's dragon fruit strawberry. That's what this is. Dragon fruit strawberry, mystery salt. But if you want, if you want Jordan to draw something to go along with dragonberry, that's cool, and maybe follows the Edigudo thing. Let, let, let me know. You know what? Just draw Jordan. If no one else has an idea, because mm. something we're probably gonna talk about. Um, uh, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, uh, yeah, draw, draw, draw two anthropomorphic fruits licking each other. One of them's licking the other's eyeball. Oh, I already, I already can see what I want. So I think Hold that's on. a good idea. Did, uh, you, you, you remember my obsession with eyeball? Well, not even my obsession. Do you remember my, uh, me stretching <laughs> that part of the panel? Yep. No, about the eyeball licking? Because, yep. um,. Okay, we're, we're gonna back up and go more into what Edoguro is, but first of all, this, uh, a lot of it's art, and a big recurring, recurring theme within Edoguro art, especially like more in the manga -y side of things, is uh, eyeball licking. And also, you see it a lot of movies. I, I don't get this eyeball fixation. I think it's a Japanese thing in general, because like you'll get things like um, the basis for the band Malice Miser Cozy. He had an eyeball fixation, just just in general. Even though that wasn't really an Edoguro thing, he just liked eyeballs. It was all, like a lot of imagery. And then, um, if you're a fan of ACDC Rag, the Japanese fashion brand, one of their more popular prints, I think it's an older print now, but one of the more popular prints is just a collection, just like a bunch of eyeballs. I actually have a couple. I have like a bag from that and shit like that. So I think it's just a Japanese thing to like eyeballs, uh, which is weird. Um, but in Edoguro, you get a lot of licking of eyeballs. And um, it's funny because if you look in a lot of, uh, they, they, I think there's a YouTube video that exists where like some, so, some dude, some old white guy who has no idea that it's like a Japanese thing really is like, I, I guess somebody was doing like a challenge like maybe five, six years ago when he made this video. And he's all like, I've, I've come to the realization that it does not exist. And I'm like, dude, you are not, okay, you must suck at Google because when I was researching it, first of all, you see it all over art, which is not real life. But 
if you really look, you can find people actually licking eyeballs. It's a real thing. And why would it not exist? It's such an easy Everything thing to do. Exists. Yeah, for, yeah, exactly. I assure you there's the crazier, more dangerous things to do, but licking an eyeball seems very, like, if I was younger, I might've done it for, like done it out of curiosity, you know? Like, I don't think I do it now. I, I, I'd lick someone else's. I wouldn't let someone lick mine. <laughs> I'm afraid it's gonna make me go blind or something. But <laughs> lick eyeballs, get co eye cold sores. <laughs> is that what is? Would that happen? Would your eyeball fall out? Would you get a sty in your eye or whatever they say? <sighs> Anyways, we start the show. Let's talk about Eroguro. Um, Danny, since you're here and you don't remember shit about Eroguro anymore because it's been years since we talked about it, <laughs> what is Eroguro? And are you all see, we, we, we can work to help in to help educate Jordan a little because uh, we'll bring you in. Jordan, I already have some ideas on how to, but we'll bring you in in a minute. But let's get this the history bit out of the way a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see, let's see what I remember. Uh, Edo Guro combining erotic and Guro gore. Um, it's like an art style that came around. Um, shoot, when did it come around? After. What era was it? I don't remember. The Taisho and Showa, show, uh, early Showa, which is basically in between the two world wars, like during Japan's modernizing days. Well, they were already modernized, but during like their their uh, imperialistic days. To be that's more right, accurate. that's right. And during times of war, a lot of artwork does tend to get more exactly. in, in any culture, really. So this was just kind of one period of Japan's kind of start of that you know, fucked up genre, but it's more uh, acceptable at this time. Mostly for, I guess, I guess mostly just like a lot of potential like sy symbolism behind a lot of pieces exactly. and stuff. That's, yeah. Uh, hmm. so but it's a lot of, it can combine a lot of weird shit together. You can combine like, you know, scat and schoolgirls like Shintaro Kago, you know, like, or you could combine like guts and lots of blood and schoolgirls, which are a common theme. <laughs> and schoolgirls, yeah. Like a, it, it, it really is. Interesting. Yeah, you can kind of find the first, um, kind of the first examples of Eroguro art with like woodblock prints and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I forget the artist's name, but yeah, you'll find that it's not a it's not a super new idea. I think it's getting kind of popular now, though, with you know young kids bringing it back. But it's gotten even more popular since we started doing the panel. I, 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 I <laughs> okay. Have I ever told you my? I, I think I've ran. I think you've been at a panel where I've ranted about this. But I need to get this off my chest, and I'll get it off my chest early before I start. Before I get a little more buzz, and I spend the whole like thirty minutes talking about this. But I, I've done this. I, we've done this panel several times, and after the first two times or so, I decided to like. I, I kind of found a structure, and mind you, at the time it was really hard to find resources on Eroguro. Like, um, like it was all scattered. And even some of the stuff I was including wasn't even like, it's it's like, I'm kind of just throwing different things in there. Like no fan of one thing is probably a fan of all of it, but I was just throwing it all in there. Cause it's like, oh, this is all like, you know, different like facets of Eroguro, you know? And I, I kid you not, somebody who I, who I know for a fact saw our panel, wrote an article about it that everyone cites now that uses my form. Like, not only do they do they structure it the way I did, like, like I, I saw that online actually. I was, like, no, I I was, was so failed. annoyed. I put all I this shit together. <laughs> yes, I I'm like, kind of like it's cool that more people are like, you know, getting into it and stuff. And the funniest part oh. is, like, yeah, see how I got plagiarized. And, well, and, and, to be, and to be even doubly fair, I, I shouldn't even say I got plagiarized. Because, like, Danny even mentioned, and, like, it's ironic that Danny's like, I forgot so much about Eroguro. <laughs> part, like, the, the original <laughs> idea for the first panel, um, I, 99, okay, I'm 99% sure that I don't think, I, I think I just wrote it at the very end because we were, like, crunch time because we are doing a lot of cons back in those days. Um, Danny wrote the outline, and then I just kind of went and filled it in, and then I add, I think I added in a bunch of shit about like movies, but like most of the art stuff was all Danny, most of the anime manga stuff was all Danny, and I just like you know just organized that a bit and threw threw my own junk in there here and there, 
And speaking of which, that the person who plagiarized us also included the weird stuff I threw in that's only loosely related. So I'm like, yeah, that's sus. This guy, no, he definitely stole your guys. Yeah, your guys there was no credit. There was no like. I went to a panel. They, they could have, they could have not mentioned it. I don't care about that. But they could have at least said like, oh, I went to a panel and then like it got me, or I was interested. I went to a panel. And now I'm writing this. No, no mention. It's as if they just did all this research on their own. And I'm like, mm. and they only included what what I included. I'm like, you could have like it's that's the. <laughs> Especially sus part. They didn't add anything to it. Anyways, that's my rant. They didn't change the order. They didn't no. add anything. Take out anything. It was all exactly the same. Stuff. And the panel. And the panel isn't exactly uh, timeliney. So like, I'm like, mm, I don't know, man. <laughs> he definitely stole it. There, there's mm -hmm. no ifs, ands, or buts about it. <laughs> I, they were taking notes, and I saw them taking notes, yeah. and we talked after the panel, which is why I know the person. <laughs> I was like. Oh, that, they didn't say anything about an article though. But and once again, they should have. Oh, the plagiarism. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> well, oh, Weston, yeah. we were talking about how we got plagiarized. It's it's, it's, it's terrible. Stole Manny's thing. Wow. Yeah. Well, it's still our thing. I, I keep saying mine, but that's mainly just me, a slip of the tongue. Um, and it, that one especially is and it's um and even unfortunately Danny never got to see it. But um, the idea was going forward, especially with that new Edogoro panel that when we um when we got back to fanime which obviously didn't happen because of uh because of covid that when danny rejoined our little panel thingy like me and rachel that they would include shit that they like so like it would be a more cohesive thing you know like we, we'd all throw in our little bits but and then, then COVID happened. yeah and then COVID happened and we, we never got to see that and it happened and it was so early on that it happened like uh, it had a fanime that there was never a time we were ever writing that version of the panel <laughs> yeah r.i.p and now fanime is happening again but they're, they're doing an online thing that charges money that i am not even gonna bother even entertaining going to so going to uh, don't they have the anime expo uh light which is like the online pretty much an online expo as far as I know, that one's free, and most of the others are too. Why Fanime yeah. charging ten dollars? And, and there's I didn't know they were charging. Yeah, like, they are. I thought it and was free. It, okay, it, technically it's free if you'd already bought a badge, because they're not refunding anyone, so they're just yeah. rolling everything over. So technically, if you bought a badge for 2020, you're good for this online thing and the next year. Oh, okay. But I didn't buy a badge. I, I've never. I've never paid for a badge of anime press, but I've never paid for a badge of anime. <laughs> I, 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 I don't want to say that. I don't want to say too much. That, like, actually, no, anime is gonna gonna like cancel us next time. I have to pay to go. And I'm like, no, I'm a normie now. <laughs> um, but no, um, I love anime. The event. There's some things every so often they do when they run it that I'm just like, yeah, is what it is. You know, that's yeah. All but that's any con, I guess, to be fair. There's at no perfect con. At least it isn't like that one anime convention was it in Texas. Oh, was, yeah. Um... Anime Monster. Fuck that yeah. con. Yeah. <laughs> uh, was Sack Anime charging as well? Uh, Sack Anime... Did, uh, <laughs> fuck Sack Anime. Sack Anime is just like doing real in-person events, and they are charging, though. Uh, I was supposed to go with Manny, but... Oh, yeah, you were supposed to go. You were supposed to go to Fanime. Uh, this th that year, I, it's, it's been so long. I forgot that you were like, I want to go to Fanime for the first time, and then it never happened. Well, not for the first time. She's been four. Yeah, I forgot about that. That's actually where I met her was Q F Fanime. But uh, anyways, anyways. But yeah, are you familiar with Edoguro at all, uh, Jordan? You know. Uh, no, I'm not. Um, actually, yes, to some degree, because you know when I view a bunch of different doujins and stuff like that, I do happen to come across. Yeah, I was gonna say like I'm pretty sure just if you um um it, it's a weird like any other like art type movement it's extremely open to interpretation <laughs> um like we always point out in the panel and I'll point out right here is that even though it comes from like um erotic and grotesque and gore and all that shit it doesn't necessarily mean porn and it doesn't necessarily mean like just pure violence um it can have both but it's not necessarily you know not all porn is edoguro not all gore movies are edoguro you know and so on like that mm -hmm. um there's a whole idea of like 
decay, decadence, like, you know, corruption, you know, within a lot of it. It's all, it's all symbolism. It's all like, like Danny said, there's a lot of symbolism there. Oh, are we drawing symbolism today? Is that what yeah, I'm doing? Yeah, if, if you want to feel art, then you, uh, just, just get the art, like, go to art school for a bit and ha have, uh, have the failed artist who's your professor give you all their, their like, theory. No uh, uh, I'm sorry, I'm ragging on art people, sorry. <laughs> and they give you all their, you know, theoretical knowledge on, like, you know, what art is. And um, then go draw some gore and porn, and then you'll probably get an idea. But no, there's actually some really great artists out there. Um, Suehiro Ma Maruo, uh, I think that's the one Danny mentioned. That's the one that... um. He does a lot of um Maruo. Maruo? Yeah. Um I'm trying to find his pieces right here. He does a lot of more like of the old school looking shit. Um, which looks more like woodblock prints. Um and woodblock prints guy, what's his name? Uh, Yoshitoshi. He's very famous for doing like the 27 murders with verse. It was considered a very early version of Ed of Eroguro art. Or at least um Eroguro would be inspired by it. Um, Hokusai, his very famous, um, the fisherman's wife, you know, the, 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 the hentai thing, um, th that cited is a very early version of like Edoguro art, a very early, um, inspiration for Edoguro art. Mm, as a matter mm. of fact, um, early hentai, it's, it, you know, can be seen as like, you know, extension of Edoguro art. It's not all of it. Like, obviously if we're talking like some of the, <clears throat> Some of the weird, like, you know, like, oh, I met my childhood friend and we had sex. And that's the, that's the show. That's not Edoguro. But I'm talking about maybe like the Urotsuko Dojis, like, you know, the Legend of the Overfiends. Um, that's definitely, you know, on uh, uh, Borders Line. We've actually interviewed Toshio Maeda, the creator of Legend of the Overfiend, and he mentions, you know, Edoguro inspirations and so on. So there's a lot of there's a lot out there. Really, he's a really funny guy. I remember like he is a funny guy. When we went we went to like one of his uh, panel things after the interview, and he was just I don't know, making crack a lot of jokes. He talks a lot about sex. <laughs> I remember he talked about um he talked about <laughs> I, I don't know if this is that panel, but he's mentioned story things all the time. That he was a writer for a magazine for a while. And he would talk about how he was on the, I think he was a writer for like a, a porn, like a Playboy type thing. So when he was on the road, he he's like, he's like, uh, my wife would always get upset with me when I'm sleeping with other women. And I'm like, don't worry, honey, it's just work. That doesn't mean anything. And he's telling this to the crowd. And like, and by the way, he speaks English, like pretty good, like really good English, uh, you know, mm. not, I should say pretty good. He speaks like perfect English, basically. Uh, probably better than I could, uh, can. See, I can't even, can't even speak. And, um, my stories are hilarious. I, I, I love talking to him. And um, <laughs> it's it's for work. It means nothing. Don't so yeah, it means nothing. It. And he tells all these stories. Like that I tell stories about, he's talked about his, the size of his member and stuff like this. <laughs> he's gone on about a lot of like, obviously That's disparagingly. Monster porn fantasies. Like, yeah. God, isn't it like super hot, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and it's really funny because like, I don't think he realizes the, I mean, he has to, I guess, but I don't think he really realizes that people like don't really associate somebody like, especially because he's kind of older. It's like somebody just talking so openly about these things. It's like, whoa. <laughs> yeah, because, like from his art style, you know, it's like, it's a little more like dated anime style. So yeah, like, you know, everyone's like, oh, he, you know, you start thinking like with this old style, this is probably like an old guy. He's probably no fun or whatever. But then, like, you meet him, and he's just like, hey, he's really open, and, yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, otherwise, friendly. he wouldn't be doing stuff like that, you know? <laughs> um, oh, shit. And the funny thing about, about I keep mentioning his wife, the funny thing is that his wife, I think, is also, like, kind of his manager. So if you go to some cons where he has a table, you probably have met his wife, if you, even if you didn't know that was her. Because, <laughs> like, she's usually the one, like, with at the booth with him, like, you know, maybe taking the money or taking the commission. He does, he does commissions, too. I've got so many things commissioned from him. Um, and um, pretty reasonable prices, too. Like, but I, I remember, <laughs> this is totally random. I remember there was one time I had him draw something from La Blue Girl, which is another thing he's done, he's worked on before. Oh, really? And, uh, yeah. yeah. Cool. Uh, he, he, that's one of his creations, also. Um, and I, I had him draw something from La Blue Girl. And when he was done, he was giving it to me. He's like, oh, I didn't like, I didn't erase all the sketch lines. And he got an eraser. I was about to start I'm like, no, 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 no. I'll take it like this. Just like that. <laughs> like, I, I mean, if he had done it before, that's whatever. But I, I can't just stand there and watch, like, 
the artist <laughs> just start erasing something from his work. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> oh, yeah. That's like a that's a sin. Yeah, a sin, it's like you know, though. obviously, if he did it when I wasn't there and he showed me completed work, yeah. But like now that it's already in my hand, like I can't have you erase this now. <laughs> I remember um, this is unrelated to Edugudo, but I went to go see. I went to this different panel where this other artist was there, and um, he was doing sketches like a live, like kind of what Jordan's doing. But he was like answering Q and A thing, he doing a mini panel. But as he was talking, he he was sketching, and the whole audience, myself included, kept getting upset. Like not mad at him, getting upset because he would draw this crazy. At one point, he drew a My Little Pony like anime girl because like somebody asked him on My Little Pony, so he was getting distracted, started drawing My Little Pony anime girl, and then when he was done. With not just that, but every other thing he do before, he would just erase it. <laughs> he would just erase oh, it. Yeah. And everyone was freaking out. And he was like this big That's name funny. animator guy just erasing his work. And somebody actually, like, it, it was a QA. So somebody actually was like, Excuse me, can someone just give him more paper so he stops erasing everything? <laughs> <laughs> and, but yeah, he actually he actually had an answer. He's like, No, he's like, I think of these things just like, you know, he sketches all the time. This is like impermanent, all this, you know, kind of like, thing. So yeah. Almost like the ritualistic going through and making like a mandala, you know, with hand and then blowing yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's what it is. That's 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 how I feel about a lot of the things I sketch. Yeah. Like I don't I don't post everything. Not everything's I make. A, a finished final piece. Sometimes you just need to warm up. Yeah, I mean look at look at this. this is, look at this. Gonna... <laughs> Why does that like Barry have legs? With Trump Oh, it's actually hilarious that with trauma movies we consider the medical Eroguro. Now, I don't know if anyone here has seen a movie called Terror Firmer. Now, once it, first of all, oh, I have yes. There's a lot of content warnings with Terra Firmer, and I'm not even gonna like, it, but I'm not even gonna explain Terra Firmer's content warnings. I, what I have to say is, a, a lot of the content warnings that apply to Terra Firmer apply to all of Erukuro. If you're, you know, if um, if things like you know, violence, sexual violence, gore, um just sex in general and all, everything mixed together are upsetting, then you're, you're probably not going to be a fan of Erogudo. And it, I literally, all of them mixed together at various times. And that's, you, you see a lot of that. And, 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 and Terra Firmer also has a like comedy like elements as well. But when we were, um, after ALA, um, I ended up staying an extra night, like, you know, like the Sunday to the Monday, um, an extra night at the hotel because I didn't want to go home and I also wanted the night to drink or whatever. And Rachel um, ended up spending the night as well. And so we were just chilling there. We didn't have much to do playing some like Mario Kart and whatever and watching drinking and then we started watching Terra Firmer just randomly I don't think I even meant to watch it I just put it on and then we started watching it and we we're watching it and we're like and like it's funny because the our, our like thesis for that new Eroguro panel is is this Eroguro that was like the thesis like kind of topic and we looked at each other and we're like is this Eroguro and if you watch Terra Firmer you'd know what I mean I'm like I don't want to I don't want to explain the plot both because I don't want everyone to like run off and like not see it because the plot sounds really horrible if I just outline it. Um, or and I, and I also don't want to. Uh, I also don't want to give it away if you do want to watch it. But it's a, it's a good movie. If you you know if nothing like that's triggering to you, please watch it. It's one, it's one of my favorite movies of all time. Also, is that the one um, with, like the the huge cockroach man? Am I thinking about the same one? Terror? No, that's Terror for Mars. Oh, never mind. <laughs> Terror Firmer is, is a trauma movie that's basically the kind of the life of the creator, the the, the creator, the founder of Troma. His name's Lloyd Kaufman, but yeah. it's basically about like somebody killing people on the set of a movie, and um, the plot goes crazy from there. Um, and there's a lot of Edogudo type elements. Actually, I'm not gonna joke, uh, no joke. I mean, no cap, <laughs> no cap. I wanna, uh, I actually wanna interview Lloyd Kaufman one of these days and ask him about like if there's any influence there, if he even knows what Edogudo is or something like that. And um, I actually meant to do that dur earlier on during the Rona, and I totally forgot until this second. Like I have not thought about that whole thing for over a year. Um, documented now in on video, so when you're yeah. editing this, you'll remember again. I'm gonna go. I'm not even joking. I'm gonna go like uh, message uh, Lloyd somewhere and be like, "Hey, can you answer a handful, like literally a handful of questions?" And then if he answers them, I'll, like that seems cool. Maybe we'll do an interview. But I'll just ask some questions. I'm curious. I, I really need to know. Everyone go. Uh, as far as I know, Terra Firmer um, was on Amazon Prime, and I think it's free if you're like on um, 
I think it's actually free on YouTube, um, like officially through Troma's like, you know, uh, channel, but go check that out. Anyways, anyways. Um, what the another fuck am I drawing? <laughs> yeah, whoa. <laughs> it's, it's got, uh, the funny thing about what you're drawing is that it's actually very kind of on point. Of, uh, I don't even, I don't know if you know the piece that you're kind of like, not I, I know where I know what I'm thinking of when I draw this. Okay, it's so a, there, there it's is a, a picture that looks pretty much exactly like that, but it's people. Um, yes. It's, yes. Um, what's his name? The very famous one. Uh, the guy that did Spiral Uruzumaki. Oh, um, same guy. But it's not him. Oh, is it? It's not. It's not no, it's not him. Oh, no, really? it's not him. Um, but you're thinking about um. Is it Koshio? Koshio? No, uh, fuck, who's the guy who's Uzumaki? It's the guy who's all, who's like, does the cat things. And it's Tomia. Shinji Ito, that's... Shinji Ito. There you go. Yes, yes, yes. It, you're thinking Shinji Ito, but it's not Shinji Ito. It's, it's another... Not. It's another guy... Oh my god, the whole thing is not loading for me. Hold on. Okay, finally it loaded. Um... Oh, I'm sorry. Well, first of all, Maruo did do a bunch of it too. But the particular piece, actually, no, it is a model. It's all model. But yeah, the particular thing I was going to mention is there's one with like in a graveyard and he's like pulling her eye open really wide. And uh, he's wearing like the, the, the Taisho era looking school uniforms, which yeah. looks like a military uniform. Um, but also, because I, I went through this right now, there's another artist named Shitaro Kago. And I think you mentioned it before he's, earlier. He, about the, he heavily has a lot of uh, scat themes, by the way, just warning for any of you looking up these names <laughs> and for there those who don't know what scat is it's um just google that for fun um <laughs> no <laughs> don't no. google it for fun <laughs> uh just think two girls one cup memo we've talked about this we're, we're we're of an age where there are people out there that probably don't even know what that is you know that's actually very true because i was like i'm like wait i was like i think i was a kid when i saw that so why am i trying to think that people still <laughs> don't know what that is um google two girls one cup then and then when you're done with that google goatsy um that'll wake you guys up Cool, cool but no, well. seriously, Shintaro Kago is really awesome. But Shintaro Kago also does a lot of body horror shit that freaks me the fuck out. Um, he also has yeah, an eye. The, the huh? fucking maggots one, the maggots and the feet one, dude. Oh my god, the maggots and the feet one. Okay. <laughs> he actually has a kind of a collection of art. That, uh, uh, it's probably in the collection, but he guess he just likes the theme. Where her draw like a, a, a girl, and there's like maggots coming out of parts of her body. But there's two in particular, one where they're coming out of her back and one where they're coming out of her feet, where they're just <laughs> they're just basically just coming out of holes in her. And if you're like a, if you're like uh, at all triggered by like tryptophobia type shit, which I definitely am. Oh, oh, I can barely look at it. Is, is it like she's like they're squeezing and then like it's coming onto someone's face like it's falling? Mm. Onto, is that the one that is also that is also um <laughs> fuck, what was his name we just said him that's also the Shinji other guy we squeezing the yeah he's squeezing the that's the thing that's the thing called Star grease Kaga. that one that's the thing called grease where he's squeezing it and it's like this yeah. anyways that's nasty but yeah <laughs> Yeah, For I see record, that all the time. Junji, are... Yeah, Junji Ito is also uh, he heavily influenced by Edo Guro shit. A lot mm. of these people are heavily influenced by Edo Guro shit. There's actually, um, during the panel, um, I like to do a, almost a history. Because in the terms of the artists, like the manga artists especially, there is kind of like um, a generational thing where like... Um, who's the first one I have listed here? Uh, yeah, Toshio Saeki. Saeki, was he the one? Or was it uh, another one? Guess it's good. Uh, no, Hideshihino. 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 I think he lived in like Japan occupied China. Um, and so he saw, a lot, he saw a lot of bullshit when he was younger. Um, and so a lot of like the, the shit he saw like inspires his art. And and for the record, um, Eroguro's like big resurgence, like obviously like a lot of movements, it's popular again right now. Um, but it's big resurgence back to the you know quote unquote like modern times was after world war one like where the u.s is having it's like you know baby boom period they're over there like having their edoguro moments where like some people are like oh japan needs to become more nationalistic again and whatever so um we get all this crazy art but um but hideshihino not only does he do like you know have all these like very graphic things but he had a series of movies 
that were called guinea pig. Remember those, uh, Danny? Oh yeah. Have guinea you ever heard pig. of the guinea pig movies? No. What is that? Okay. Okay. I need to take a sip of this before I tell you about guinea pig. <laughs> Preparing himself. Interesting. Physically. <laughs> so guinea pig is a series of movies. Um, I don't know if you would call them horror, but for the sake of discussion, we'll call them horror. Um, they're basically uh, gore movies, and they're, it's a type of genre that honestly only really exists in Japan. And they're actually, when I used to think this, oh, okay, I have to back up. I used to go to a lot of, I, 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 I mentioned this briefly in some of the Eric panels, but I never really talk about this that much. I used to go, I used to be a huge fan of horror movies, and I used to go to a lot of horror movie conventions. When you go to these, you kind of learn that there's an even weirder underground of, of horror movies. And honestly, it's like American Eruguro, just like on the Uber Uber um, DL. Not D, D, saying some DL is weird, but like they have websites and shit like that. But you're not going to find this in a store, you know, or on Amazon. Um, and a lot of people in the U.S. don't really think it's out of the box. But mm. um, you see a lot of like underground horror movies, a lot of these weird torture porn movies but like not like saw imagine like, like snuff films though yes but they're fake obviously but they're basically like we kill someone or something in one room for an hour you know um and that's basically the movie there's not really a there's not really much usually there is something of a wraparound plot or something very famously these movies got like a bit of notoriety because supposedly and I debunked this in our panel. I don't know if I want to tell it all here, but supposedly one of the movies, um, I think it was Flower and Flesh and Blood, um, was shown to, to Charlie Sheen, and he thought it was real, so he called That's the FBI. Right. I was there but, for that panel. I remember that panel. That was a good panel. Yeah, but that shit is not really... Oh, so you remember? The, yeah. Mm. The, the, first of all, that movie looks like... I'm giving it too much credit. Like you can, <laughs> you can tell that that movie is like not real. Yeah, yeah, like, right. Yeah, it's I, probably, I remember that scene. <laughs> if you don't like, if you don't like gore or blood, you're probably gonna be like, eh, maybe a little squeamish. But they have really, they have like the cartooniest sound effects, and I don't think they mean to. I just think they just don't know like how to make overly it. squishy blood. Yeah. <laughs> And everything's just kind of kind of weird. Well, um, well, don't you think it's like kind of like an ASMR experience though? That's why like they made it so. <laughs> Honestly, apparent. it's hilarious you say that because one of the movies is about them torturing someone in a room, and I think they torture them through the senses. So there mm. is one where they torture them with sound, and it's literally, literally like just ten minutes of them giving this person sounds and not all of them are necessary like just shrill white noise mm -hmm. um and at one point i think it's gone now i think i think it's off of youtube now but at one point like years ago it used to be on youtube as an asmr thingy like you would like people would clip that just to put it up as asmr <laughs> wow <laughs> but even all the movies kind of are because most of them don't have dialogue in traditional sense and if you want to just hear like like a song sound you know, and like, maybe like, yeah, if you want to hear that for like a while, it, it definitely doubles it as ASMR because there's not oh, really much going on. No, so soothing. <laughs> yes. Well, ASMR itself is weird. I don't even want to get into that, that whole shit, but. TLDR, um, the timelines don't match up. And I'm pretty sure this that's just a, a, I have yet to confirm it with anyone. Obviously, I'm never, I don't think I'll ever get a chance to confirm it with Charlie Sheen. But I really want to ask Chris Gore, who everyone says is the one that told him. And Chris Gore, just he's a guy who wrote, wrote for Film Threat. And I'm like, I don't think this would have happened in the 90s, like the early 90s. It just doesn't sound right. So, yeah. Mm. Like, maybe in the internet age, but nothing lines up. Um, But anyways, anyways, look at the chat, little um i like how cute the art's making you creepy the art is pretty creepy but i actually like it you know what this looks like this looks like two pac-man who've kind of gotten like <laughs> i was thinking these are like m ms m m <laughs> well the thing is is like i haven't gotten to the fruit portion i was just trying yeah. to draw like yeah, the whole shape and everything <laughs> um, um but I, I think i'm pretty much done with the shape so what kind of fruit should these be <laughs> what movie was in what was he talking about oh wait what movie what movie are you acting right there, um, Mr. Taku? Everyone from my from my space years used to love saying two girls one cup. <laughs> faces, yeah, faces the dead type horror movies. That's a, a very good way to put that. It's basically like 
<laughs> and it's funny because the, the 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 American scene is it can be as cheesy as well to a degree, but the American scene has some. There used to be a documentary that was on Netflix. I don't remember the name of it anymore, but it was basically about this underground horror scene. And this was back in the Wild West days of Netflix when like they had a lot more shit to watch uh, when they were like the only streamer service. And uh, I just remember thinking how wild it was that like um, a national streaming service had this documentary on there about these movies that I used to buy. Like, because I remember one of the directors is this guy named BL Zabub, but his name is like <laughs> BL Zabub. Um, <laughs> And like he's so he's the stupidest, like the wackiest guy to ever see in person. But he does like these crazy ass like you know movies, and um, and like there's this other guy who does like, and he and I, I met him at several conventions. He introduced me to this guy who does like um these these other like snuff films, but they're fake snuff films. By the way, for the record, for this, you know what the snuff film is? That's like when you like film someone being murdered on camera, and today oh you film it for the purpose of uh selling it and to date people like the fbi and whoever has investigated this there has no been no proof there's ever been a snuff film just fyi but uh this other uh that bell the the, the beelzebub guy introduced me to this other guy's movies and i remember i bought some of them and i took them home <laughs> and they were so disturbing uh <laughs> I threw them away. I'll never forget that. Oh, like, man. <laughs> they were, and I, I regret this to this day because, first of all, they're worth a ton of money. Um, because, like, they made, like, a couple hundred of those DVDs and probably other people like me just threw them away. Um, and I don't think those movies exist on the internet really anymore. Maybe on some, like, dark web mess, like, video site where they claim it's real or some bullshit. But, um, and I, I, if I'm not mistaken, that movie ends with them getting up so that you know it was fake. But until then, it was shot so grittily. So it was even shot badly. Like there was like a static camera. Um, it just looked like I was watching something for real. I remember, I remember I was like, okay, okay, Manuel. I think your horror movie, I think it's too, you think your horror movie days are behind you. <laughs> Let's move on with life. Okay, I've reached my limits. Yeah, now like, like I found my limit. <laughs> like, <laughs> like I didn't know I had a limit, but I, I have found it. <laughs> but once again, uh, I, I don't want to sh- like, Nobody actually got hurt in that, obviously. So if, 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 if that's your form of entertainment, I'm not going to judge you. Um, everyone should have a right to that, if that's what you like. Oh, no, and, there's going to be plenty of judgment, just not said out loud. Don't worry about that. Yeah, yeah in my head, I'm like, you fucking freaks. <laughs> 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 no, but the Beelzebub guy was pretty... Was, was pretty creepy. And that's the funny thing, because his movies were, were pretty out there, too. But his movies, like... Okay, most people are... St- <laughs> I almost said most people are stupid. Uh, a lot of people don't think when they watch something. By nature, if if there's cuts in a movie, and I don't mean like jump cuts, I mean if there's a close up, then a body, then a head, then like a, a different shot, then a wide shot, then a close up. There's no way that was real, because no way some guy in their house like set up like five cameras for this. But like, if you see like what I saw the other guy with just one camera, that that kind of feels like okay, guys. You know, like I think I'm watching someone's like you know home video here. <laughs> but, different story, um, definitely a different story. Yeah. So my point is, like that should give it away if you ever think something's real for anything. If there are like lots of different camera cuts like that, then no. <laughs> and who's doing the close-ups? So yeah. <laughs> Anyways. Anyways. Uh, Oh man, we're making really good time here. We got a lot out of the way, and I, uh, yeah. I was like, and we're I'm actually like pretty much done with this. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll add to this, but it's actually funny because, um, like I was there's some more I want to talk about, but I was afraid that we eat up time and I'd get a lot more. It just happens to be that a lot of my deviation y stories are still related to Edoguro. <laughs> right. Yeah, have you ever been a fan of like really, uh, over the top, gory type, edogoro type, type things, Danny. Um, I I used to really like horror stuff. Um, but I don't know, just slowly. I guess like I guess since we haven't really done the edogoro panel and stuff, like I don't really, I'm not super into it like on the daily anymore. You know, it's like a kind of a forgotten thing in the past for me almost oh my god that's so sad no she has a new kink now they have a new kink 
Uh, yeah, what's, your, what's, what's the what's new kink, Danny? <laughs> <laughs> now that Aragudo isn't in the in yeah, the apparently in the, in the not your jam anymore. anymore. What you into? Uh, I can't say that. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> okay, so it's worse than Aragudo. <laughs> Are, are you like? Are you, <laughs> are you like Rachel? You're gonna send me like this really gory, like the, the gory, gory art. You'll be like, "This is my jam." <laughs> <laughs> so, so on uh, next next uh, FA <laughs> on the next FA podcast, Danny's gonna talk about their new kink and why you should be interested in it. <laughs> um, <laughs> or 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 to convince you not to call the police at the end of the video. <laughs> No, have, have you ever seen? Have you ever seen any crazy, uh, really crazy, like gory shit, uh, Jordan? Now, when you say like gory, what what do you mean? In what way? In anything, because obviously, uh, I'm pretty sure that I'm the only one who has like, at least in this crowd, I'm the only one who has this experience of buying these like hand pressed DVDs from some guy, like from some dude at a convention. I'm pretty sure you didn't experience that. What, what, but you know, okay, okay, so you know, it's. It, I, I really don't know like how to answer that because like I've seen like all of like those um really intense videos that like guy's body gets cut in half, guy tries to do like a jump off a dive board and splits his head when he hits. Oh wait, the ground. do you mean like the actual like faces of death type shit? Yeah, like that's what I mean. Like I don't know if you mean like that or what what exactly, like what specific I'm not gonna lie. Like I, it definitely wasn't like a, a, a fetish of mine. But I, I used to be like <laughs> mad morbidly curious about shit like that when I was younger. Uh -huh. Um because I remember um I had an ex girlfriend who was probably kinda weirdly into that stuff in another way but um mm. but but i remember one day she <laughs> one day she showed over she showed over she showed up to my house with a movie we were gonna watch a movie like you know netflix and chill of like the of, of the 90s uh the late 90s but um she showed up like to my move to my, to my movie. she was to my house like fucking like you know i'm like a teenager and I, like might have still been might have still been yeah it was early high school i remember this now and she showed up and the movie she decided to bring was faces of death <laughs> oh oh <laughs> and um i remember i was so confused by it first of all if you've never seen faces of death like half of it's fake but half of it's real and you can you can tell which ones are the real but similar to what i just said earlier about the editing thing but half of them are real and then afterwards um probably because i didn't object to it but i really wasn't really into it um she brought another tape which is like a more modern version of faces of death it might have still been faces of death like part seven or something but it was like a new version where everything was real but like it was just like kind of like security footage or like uh you know just, just footage that, like who knows how they got this but it's like oh here's i remember i forget this there's a video there was this thing where these this couple was running across the train running across like a, a train field there's multiple tracks and they're running, they're running, they're running. And right when they're about to like get to like across this one a particular track, the, uh, I guess they see a train coming. So the dude just lets go of his girl's hand and then backs up. And then she keeps running and hit by a train. And I was like, what the fuck? And I, and I remember I was like, oh man, uh, this is fucking the weirdest shit ever. And I think I, I, think I, I was kind of like in my head, I'm like, I think I need to break up with this girl. <laughs> But, but like I'm, I'm kind of concerned. Yeah, no. but it did make me more uh, morbidly curious about other shit. And then this is also like, as the years went on after that, this is the early internet days. Um, and obviously this ended up with me finding out about those uh, underground horror movies at the convention. That's like the, the end of that story. But along the way, I was like, let's see what they have on the internet today that I can like scar manual forever. They will never unsee. <laughs> so yeah. The internet was a wild place. I know it still is a wild place. You just gotta know where to look. Yeah. It's so it's so sanitized though. Well, I mean, if you go on Bing, you're like that's where you usually get like a lot of the good oh, <laughs> stuff. Yeah, <laughs> I mentioned this before. FYI, not only does Bing give you different search results, but if you ever if you ever Google something and it's like, oh, five results have been taken off because of DMCA complaints, go to Bing. Nobody ever DMCA's Bing. Yep. <laughs> no one no one even knows Bing exists. 
So yeah, if you, if you want to go look up all your uh, whatever the fuck you're looking up against like DMCA, just go. No, but it's funny because everyone makes fun of Bing, but Bing's like owned by Microsoft, so you think they would be doing okay? No, <laughs> not at all. It's like I, I think obviously everyone changes it once they install Chrome and like you know Google or something in there, but like I think Bing is like the default search engine on every Windows computer. So if you have Windows and you type in something to search, it'll go to Bing and let's change that. So yeah. Thank you, Ben. Anyways, for being the... I've I've seen videos of the ones where people have committed suicide. Online. Oh, by accident! Oh, that, that's crazy. By I've never seen by accident. Did, wait, wait, seen... wait. Did so we? A few Did... of those kind of videos like have resurfaced too, like on on the newer social media. You know, like now on TikTok and stuff. And oh my god, there TikTok is crazy. Time, like, shit. Some some person like at off themselves during a live or something and it's, it's like this kind of thing is still here still going yeah just just in a different you know it's just shown more uh readily available to everyone now like it's, it it, it's funny because uh one, one of the one of the topics i want for a future upz episode so it'll be it'll be more all ages friendly but one of the topics <laughs> i want is like the how crazy the internet was back back in the days when like everything was a message board and shit like that but it was just a lot easier to like um to accidentally watch shit in the internet back then that's probably the better way to put it i think half the time unless you're just opening and even if you open a message from someone there's usually a preview and there are ways to hide previews but that's usually a lot more complicated but typically like back in the old days you would be clicking a mystery link and it's like is this a virus is this uh is, is, is this gonna it's gonna show me like goatsy again you know go, for those who don't know goatsy was like the 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 really fucked up version of a rickroll before rickrolling was a thing <laughs> but um i remember there was like a hamster dance goatsy that was popular for a while where it was just goatsy but they played the hamster dance song over it like you know do 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 was a hamster dance but yeah but anyways um <laughs> But um, yeah, you know, it was a fucked up place back then. Uh, ooh, ooh, I got my 5G in my arm, streaming BTS all day, every day. Oh, you got vaccinated! Yay! I need to get that done. I need to get done next week for sure. This is it. I'm done. I'm done. I, I can't keep. Can't keep. Is doing that an this. orange fucking a? Is that orange fucking a berry? Is that an <laughs> orange and a strawberry? Yes, it is. It's beautiful. You should um. Uh. <laughs> Still on the vaccinated manual. You should also. You should. Ooh. Um. I'm gonna draw something else. <laughs> Real quick. Yeah, I'm gonna say draw something else. <laughs> Save that and draw something else. Um. But yeah, uh, uh, going back to Edoguro art, we got deviated by the internet thing, which is still a good idea. Good idea. Not about good idea, but still fun talk about maybe not to actually experience it in it back then um i first got shown two girls one cup um my story is not unique by the way but i was first shown it by somebody and i knew it was gonna be bad I, i'm not stupid the, the, they set it up so it was gonna be recording you know like my webcam was gonna be recording it was my computer too so they set it up so that my web and back in the old days i'm not sure if you can still do this but back in the old days you could just record to youtube like immediately um, like almost like not a live stream per se, but like you would hit record and when you were done recording, it would be on YouTube in a few minutes. Um, but, um, anyway, so we were doing that and, um, you hit record. He's like, oh, I'm gonna show you a video. And I'm like, okay. I knew it was going to be bad. I knew it was going to be bad, but I was not expecting what it would be. But the funniest part of that video, which unfortunately is gone because like my channel got deleted because of other bullshit. Mm. I think I uploaded like a bunch of VK videos back then and then they got copyright claims. But, um, but the funniest part about that reaction video that I mentioned before was that while we were watching it, he got up and ran to my bathroom. You can't, you don't know what happens because it's just, it's on me. But what happened like off screen was he got up and ran and threw up in my bathroom. He got up and threw up, not me, even though he was showing it to me. <laughs> what a wuss. <laughs> trying to, trying to get a, trying to get a rise out of you and then couldn't even yeah. handle it himself. <laughs> I, I, I don't know why, I, I, I don't. I don't recall if they had seen it before. I assume they had, but part of me thinks that they hadn't actually watched it before. They just thought it'd be funny to like get me because I, I didn't know what it was. Mm. Like, yeah. 
everyone's seen that Family Guy version when they watch it, which by the way, it was like eight years late. That, I watched that shit way before Family Guy got to it. But if you watch that Family Guy thing where they're all like, oh yeah, it's two girls. Oh yeah, you know, it's like, I, I when they told me the title, I thought it wasn't just be crazy porn. Like where that guy put the bottle up his butt or something like that. I thought it was gonna be something like that. That I was gonna be like, oh God, can't unsee that. But not like, oh God, you know? Yeah. <laughs> can't unsee that <laughs> yeah danny do you have any request for drawings a request let's see we've done mm. are we gonna stay with a fruit theme we're gonna leave you can leave the fruit theme that was just my dragon berry bullshit <laughs> no like this is all gonna be left up and then we'll just jpeg it and then post yeah. it in later i don't know <laughs> you know what let's see let's see Let's keep with the fruit theme and okay. do a papaya vagina. Just keep, but the papaya? seeds, okay, make the seeds eyeballs because we're talking about, you know, Edo Guro and we got to reference something. Wait, like a mouthy the vagina? In the, yeah, there's an eyeball in a vagina and the guy's like, oh, oh there is an eyeball in the vagina. I, know, I don't remember things. the artist, but we're going to keep with the fruit theme and we're going to make a papaya. Papaya, but there's an eyeball in there. <laughs> okay. It's just a sideways <laughs> eyeball, Jordan. All right, I'll do that. Um, I need to look up a papaya myself. Hold on, I, need to, I wonder if I can have a picture of papaya. Even though I said there was a papaya on the thing earlier. Okay, that's a, that is a papaya. Is, is there a possibility we can get TOS from for, for something like that? It's a papaya that? eyeball. It's a Only papaya, we... but with a very like. Only, look, it, but it's an eyeball inside. Only we know that it's supposed to be a, a thing. Just don't yeah. draw it too. Okay. Don't draw it too perfectly. Don't draw it too perfectly. <laughs> and, and nobody reported us in the chat. <laughs> okay. okay. 18 plus stream. All right. I have to. I have to check what a papaya looks like real quick. Just uh, um, referencing fruit here. Referencing fruit. Um. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> but um but yeah going back to Edo Guro, there's a there's a lot of other um there's a lot of other uh crazy artists there's another one who i wanted to talk about unfortunately I, I even if i had a way to screen share i couldn't show you this art for obvious reasons um but there's another artist that's uh toshio saeki and uh toshio saeki is the one who does like the a lot of school girly things very colorful um there, there's a uh, a lot of school girls in sexual situations and um very crazy art and there's even one where i believe that he did like a school girl version school girl version of um the dream of the fish oh he didn't do a school girl version he did a version of dream of the fisherman's wife but it's a it's a dude like going after a mermaid he's like cutting open her yeah anyways yeah, yeah. But it's that artist, which is the reason I'm bringing him up, is that there's a picture where, like, this dude is, like, pleasuring a woman, possibly, I think it's going on in that picture, and he has her legs open, and in between her legs is an eyeball. Yeah, that is... And, um, and I think it's actually a couple other times in other art, but particularly I, I was going over that when I was like, ah, shit. <laughs> so, yeah. He has several different versions of that too. Like one of them is like this lady who like she's de-skinned at the bottom, like he her legs are open and splayed, and then like it just be slowly becomes like bones and her skeleton, but she's like human flesh, muscle, and then and then bones. But he has, he has a theme a lot of just like a a woman laying down with her legs out and like some guy being above, being grabby. Being grabby. <laughs> <laughs> oh, grabby is a theme with Toshi. Yeah, that, that, that is, yes, that is a theme. Um, we, it's funny because um, one one of the key, one of the key, like how do I say this, like one of the key historical moments of Edgar, and also kind of what killed it in his in his infancy in his early days, was a. Uh, something called the Abisada incident. And um, 
I purposely didn't open with this uh, because I'm just like, uh, I, I, I just wanted to, to, to jump around a little. But you remember what the Abisada incident is, Danny? Yeah, I remember. <laughs> I remember. <It's>, uh, <laughs> Um, I'll give you the, we'll give you the quick version. Quick version. Um, okay. Lady prostitute, guy who wants to get choked during sex. Um, he hires her, and then after they do it, he's like, you know, next time, don't stop choking me. <laughs> you know, like keep going until I'm dead. And so she does that the next time, and then, uh. And then he dies, and she chops off his penis and uses it allegedly to pleasure herself. Yeah, but that's short story. <laughs> yeah, basically she uh, um, it's just the story of sexual depravity, and just like any other like you know artistic movement, you know, um, you sing you you single in on like the, the crazy ones who like similar. It's funny because uh, somebody somebody compared this. Uh, well, a friend of mine compared this to uh, not like someone famous. Uh, mm. <laughs> my friends aren't famous. I don't know why I said that. Anyways, a friend of mine um, was all like, "Oh, so it's kind of like the way everyone like oh the hippie movement died after like the Charles Manson thing. It's actually very similar to that. It, it like almost entirely because yes, yeah, like the Edokuda movement of the time pretty much died after the Abasada incident because it's like oh shit apparently this leads to murder so yeah it's uh well you know obviously this is like a very extreme case but um everyone's like oh this is all because it's like you know everyone's getting so depraved and even though i don't think either of them really practice well i guess maybe they were because they were the whole idea was was that this is where this road of Edoguro sadomasochism type exploring oneself, you know, gets you. It's like, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, and it became a whole like, you know, thing. And there have been several movies about it. Um, there's one that I like showing where like, um, they show homeboy's penis is cut off and it's this crazy thing. And it's funny because I, I, I don't know if I ever properly mentioned this in a panel, but that scene is meant to it was filmed to be censored like they it was never really meant to be ever shown uncensored it's just that when they show it in other countries they don't have to blur out um either his real penis or even the fake penis they just they just show it so it's the very it's an odd effect but it doesn't matter like i'm sure any guy watching that is just like ah you know <laughs> like, like ah no they, so yeah Sexual depravity. Um, what is this? I'm reading some of the. Wait. wait. Sorry. <laughs> Sexual depravity. Ooh. The scissors. The scissors. Mm. But um, <laughs> that's a thick papaya. <laughs> um, y'all gotta chill. <laughs> Just... I, I know this chat's going crazy, but uh, <laughs> but TLDR. It's. It, it, it's a very iconic thing, Edoguro. Like I mentioned, there's been all the movies about it. Um, fun fact about the the actual Abasada, she, um because Japan's a little weird in some of its like you know laws and sentencing, which some people might say is like you know the better way to do. It, I don't know. Um, she didn't serve very much time in, in, in prison, and she actually um, within her lifetime, like almost during the second boom of Edoguro, she became the, the subject of like. Um, how do I say this? I don't want to say she became famous. She, she didn't really want the fame. Um, but there was a documentary. Of, yeah, there was a documentary about the murder that she was in because she was no longer in prison anymore. Um, and then I think she ended at some point, some like reporter wanted to go find her. And uh, he was he ended up finding her in a monastery and she became a nun. <laughs> And then she presumably died. Uh, not presumably. I think she when he went back. I guess he was going to interview her anyway, like that. When he went back, she had died. So yeah, she she, she ended up finishing like com finishing her life. She ended up uh, ending her life in an nunnery. So yeah, I, th I find that interesting to uh to as a little coda to that story. But I don't know. There's a lot of a lot of other Edgar aspects. One of the speaking about movies is that there's a. Uh, there's a weird tie to like obviously we mentioned the the fucking guinea pig movies earlier and there's several other movies like that and one of the funny things is um actually i'm gonna move on to the anime a bit one of the because i, I want to make sure to talk about this one of the reasons that edukuro kind of picked up again recently is because there's been this huge thing have you heard of sako sanobashi uh danny mm. saki sanobashi i think actually 
it's a, a supposedly lost anime that um um there was this there's been this huge search for it, it um there's been this whole thing about like lost media and one of my favorite youtubers a guy named wang did a, a couple of videos about this where tldr there's a, there's supposedly uh, going from some like old 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 ass 4chan thread there's some like anime where these girls are locked in the bathroom and they kill it they, they end up killing themselves oh, i think one kills another but they end up all dying in very horrible ways mm-hmm. and um they've called it go for a punch sako sanabashi and it's become like this internet legend <clears throat> and tldr it's been all but debunked everyone's like no no i made it up like on 4chan because i was just trolling the poster the op and um but this is this mad search for it and throughout the search they've actually uncovered like other supposedly lost media of other like gore movies and other edoguro type things and because the plot sounds very edoguro esque um obviously one of the first things they did when they're like oh sako sanabashi go for a punch let's go look up all of shintaro kago's work let's go look up all of jinji ito's work let's go look up hideshi kino stuff let's yeah. see if this actually exists and that's actually why there's been a lot of um Okay. New, that's not the only reason but that's been a huge like you know um yeah. thing have you heard about it uh jordan Taco uh, <clears throat> um i think he brought it up to me one time and then i tried to read the or uh, watch the documentary on it but i was like um i don't remember too much about it no but i do remember that whole the whole that whole thing about the schoolgirls being in the bathroom and all that crazy nonsense going on that much i remember hearing about yeah, and it's funny because people have actually uh, gotten so attached to the idea of this anime existing that there have been fan recreations. There have been uh, like both animation and just art drawings. I actually own a sticker. It's actually really big, so it's like a, it's almost a print at this point. Uh, I wish I, if I was smarter, I would have dug it out before we started. But I have this sticker of like the Sako Sanabashi art, where just like just like this gory looking chick on it, and. Um, yeah, it's just, uh, I just find that funny that that's kind of thought this new interest in it. Even though I really wonder if if they really delved into, I don't know, maybe this is just the hipster of me talking. But I, I, I um, Edo is a very particular thing, as, as evidenced by the fact that Q has been mildly disgusted half of this, half of this <laughs> entire stream. Um, because it's a very. There's nothing Acquired taste. <laughs> nothing. Yeah. And I don't even know if you'd even call it an acquired taste. I, 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 I don't even know if you would really call it a taste. It's yeah. just, you know, are you curious or not? It's all curious. I'm trying to like, it's crazy. It really is like, <laughs> I don't know. Here I am um, telling my stories about how I, I'm going to keep bringing this up because I like it was hilarious when it happened when Milk is all it's worth. Here I am ragging on Rachel for that one maggots thing. But then I'm over here like, oh yeah, I used to buy all this underground horror movie shit, you know, from these guys like selling it under the table at conventions. I'm, I'm the fucking weirdo here. No, I'm not. You are. <laughs> Rachel's like here to defend herself. And keep, keep talking my smack. I hate this. What? I talking to this. smack while she's not here? No, I just hate this. <laughs> just oh, hate the papaya. This. Oh, you yeah, eat all Edoguro. Edoguro is actually really great. It's, uh, there's a lot. See, the great, the great thing about it is, is that if you're a fan of honestly because a- almost any every anime fan has gone to look at the other stuff you know what i mean quote unquote the other stuff there's a chance you've encountered other good stuff at one point at in your in your anime fandom even if you realize it or not whether you liked it or not it's another story but <laughs> you've almost definitely encountered it yeah i feel like it's hard to get like to be into anime and things now without finding out about you know the other stuff well i remember i remember a time when junji ito wasn't the most popular fucking person around now he's like i don't know maybe crazy popular i know what what happened i already was a note like when i asked you about tomi i nobody knew what the fuck i was talking about so so the way i understand that happening was you know, uh, as far as like in terms of information that I know about Edokuro or whatever, um, it, it's it's just because like out of I think like out of all the prints that you would usually see uh, here in Western culture, a lot of it had Junji Ito's name to it in the beginning, like, and um, you know the way it just kind of like spread uh, to to a lot of people because then when it hit the internet, like oh it was probably Junji Ito stuff that you saw first and yeah, not just the weave. More accessible, yeah. Yeah, it wasn't just like the weave that saw, like everyone saw it. 
So that's probably why his his name popped up more, and that's why he has an anime. So go figure. <laughs> I was just laughing at what you're drawing. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, I, my God. <laughs> um, sorry, I, I didn't listen to everything you said. But what's funny about that is, um, I, I don't. Now his art's definitely. He has some moments where he's definitely out there. And honestly, the Tomia, the the, the Tomia series is probably even though it's not the most violent per se, that definitely has a lot of Edoguro undertone. Once again, it doesn't have to be the most violent, but that definitely has a lot of Edoguro undertones in it. Um, the whole idea is, if you don't know what Tomia is, it's a very simple story. Chick comes in. She's like this kind of like, kind of like this, kind of like this Uber like I don't know what to call her like kind of like this like. She's just like beautiful and you know like. But she's almost like mean to you too. She's almost like yeah. you know it's like one of those. Anyways, but she 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 gets you to you become obsessed with her, and eventually she's like okay I'm done with you I'm gonna go leave you now and you're so obsessed with her that you end up killing her and you cut her up and the whole and one one of the ideas between that is first of all everyone ends up killing her and then those other pieces become other tomias um and the whole idea is is like is she really the 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 villain of the story or is like technically she's not doing anything <laughs> it's like you know these these other guys are fucking just killing her all the time um so yeah it's kind of one of those weird it's like a weird thing like that but that that's a very edogurui type story right there and um but yeah i i, I still I, like part of the thing i think is that similar to what i just said that it's not the most violent thing but it's definitely edogurui in, like inspired and there's edogurui elements in there is mm. that there are times I, now i don't want to insult junji because i love junji to that but it's almost like if you look go to him as your first Edoguro person, that's like diet Edoguro. You know what I mean? That's like the diet <laughs> coke of Edoguro. <laughs> it, um, you don't get the eyeballs and the vaginas there. You don't get the you don't get the schoolgirls well, maggots also out their feet. Probably why it is so like he's so much more widely popular yeah. because it's a little more like easily digestible. You know, it's like exactly. it's still got a lot of horror elements and stuff, and you know, but it's not like past um i guess the moral line that a lot of people will draw for themselves yeah. going his into his stuff probably got past like a lot more of the um the checklist of things that people could post yeah. online or could like uh show everywhere else sell in bookstores because you know? <laughs> it's it, it's it's just like it's just horror his stuff is just it's like more exactly. genre of like yeah. horror not out of google yeah. yeah well like this shit like told me it which once again um uh, sure somebody gets cut up at the end of it usually or she gets killed in some way but is that story really horror you know what i mean there's like except that someone dies at the end there's not really much horror to it um like i don't know like ho horror is a funny thing <laughs> you know depends on what scares you nothing scares manual anymore except the creeping fear of like you know death i don't know i'm just picking that up <laughs> but anyways no, um but um I don't know. Also, Mr. Otaku, and, yes. Yeah, Mr. Otaku makes a good point. Like, yeah, it's easier to start off with that because if you gotta know if you like those kind of themes or not first. But yeah, before you go in and dive headfirst into like the almost snuff films. You gotta mm. make sure it's your jam. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> oh, I just gotta keep bringing that up. I'm sure ass. Who? <laughs> Mm, I don't know if you guys know this, but it's not really out of Google, but it, there's like a lot of like sex and stuff in it. It's the this is artists were like uh, he 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 drew it like it was like about like these this kid that turned into a vampire, and then this guy made like a whole cult about him being a vampire, like how that if he gets bitten he'll live forever. I, I you know it's it's not really like a lot of information I can give you. Um, but he made another one where it was like, it, it was so, his stuff is so confusing. But like his mom supposedly like really loves her son, and like you know she does all these things because like her you know kills her cousin and his cousin and um like tells the father to go away and then like she starts like making making out with the son. I'm just like, what's going what on fuck? here? What is this? But it's it has like that. I don't know, this, the art style and everything like that has like that vibe where it's about it's like on the edge of being like an Eroguro. But I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I even brought Hard this to up. to pinpoint it down. <laughs> exactly. No, exactly. There is a lot of, you know, 
crazy mommy porn out there. So <laughs> it, it's not. A, a, it's not porn. Crazy that's mommy the porn, but that's the story. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's all. <laughs> no, either. Mom. Well, mind you, th th this bottle was already like barely f only had like a tiny little bit in it, but th this dragonberry bottle is dead. I'm sad now. As each bottle gets empty, I'm like, there might not be more of you. <laughs> you should just save it, and then later on when you drink it and realize that all the sugar has been displaced and made it just like the worst thing possible, you'll Ew. be like... <laughs> uh, just put water in there and start like drinking all the residue. <laughs> exactly. That's what oh, I'm saying. Man. Also, uh, it's funny you mentioned that, Weston, about John Waters' movie being borderline Eroguro. Um, I can't... And I know this exists. I'm not just making this up. There was an interview where John Waters mentioned Eroguro at some point. And the only reason I know this because I was looking up... Um, I, I was looking up... Um, how do I say this? There, there was a documentary, like a, a web documentary, like, you know, a YouTube documentary, I mean to say. Like, it's just some YouTuber doing it. I don't want to... Not that some YouTuber is like, you know, we're some YouTuber, but um, but I mean, some YouTuber did a thing where he was uh, talking about Eroguro. I want to, shit, who was he talking about? Might have been about Junji Ito, but at some point he mentioned John Waters and he brought up a John Waters interview. And I don't think he was trying to say John Waters movies were Eroguro or even John Waters was saying that himself, but definitely John Waters knows of Eroguro. <laughs> so like probably there's some influence there. And John Waters seems like a very like worldly, worldly man. So I wouldn't be surprised if, uh, um, if he's definitely from, uh, I wouldn't be, not that I wouldn't be surprised. I definitely would think that he would be very familiar with it. Give me the soda. Um, but another interesting, another crazy aspect about Eroguro, and probably it's most confusing sub genre, sub, sub thing is, um, is music. Uh, music yes oh, um visual k <laughs> yes first of all first of all if you're familiar with visual k there's a ton of erokuro influences here and there um but there, there's a genre a specific quote-unquote genre no i don't like talking music genres i've mentioned this before when you start talking about subgenres of subgenres of subgenres, you become that guy in the music shop who's all like, oh, this is post black metal, neo grunge, post pop punk. Don't you know this? You know? <laughs> Are you making are you making fun of me, Manuel? Sorry, yeah, it's basically you. So yeah, it's it, we, we, we get stupid shit like that. But there is like a subgenre of visual K called Eroguro K. And technically there's only one group in that subgenre, as far as I really know, and that's Caligari. And it's funny because they're probably like, don't get me wrong, there's definitely some imagery in their lyrics and definitely some imagery in themselves, but they're probably a lot more low key at, if you're coming off of watching, like, by the way, a very good, also approachable movie director is a guy named, um, oh, shit, Sino, what the fuck's his name? He just did a movie recently. Um, uh, I'll remember Tarantino. his name in a second. No, you son of a bitch. Um, <laughs> Uh, I'll get his name in a second. Sorry. Anyways, go back to okay. But mm -hmm. a lot of other bands, you know, kind of get lumped in there. Um, a, a very good example is Duran Gray. Duran Gray gets gets lumped into the Edo Goodo K so much. Even though they're not really Edo Goodo, they're not an Edo Goodo band. They just have some elements sometimes in like not even a lot of songs. It's like a handful of songs, you know. Yeah, they have a handful of songs. Um. What's that one? They have a very, I mean, obviously there's obscure, but that's the one I'm thinking about. Mm -hmm. There's that, there's a very famous one that has like, there's another one that has a killing in it, but I think it's just about some dude who killed someone and he's like living in the apartment with, with their body or whatever. Uh, that mermaid one that they did uh, a while, kind of recently, one of the more recent oh, songs. Oh, yeah. Uroko or something? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that also had a lot of Eroguro element, elements, especially, I think they even mentioned this in, in the, in like the interviews or somebody did, I don't think it was like Kill, but somebody mentioned in the interviews that, um, um, one of the guinea pig movies is called Mermaid in a Manhole. And in that movie, this dude, just to give you a really fast version, I can't, I, I couldn't show you any of these things, either the movie or that video, by the way. But, um, but in the movie, this dude finds a mermaid in like, in like a sewer and he takes her home. And then like, she starts like growing like these lesions on her. So he starts like cutting her. I don't know why she's cutting her up. But he starts cutting her up. And then he realizes that like she's getting worse. So he keeps cutting her up and like drawing, like doing art with like her bodily fluids. 
And at the end of the movie, it turns out, like, well, we don't really know what turns out. But at the end of the movie, he's killed her, and then somebody breaks in, like, some, somebody comes to go check on him, and he's, like, he's there in the house, and he's killed his wife, who, like, has had cancer or something like that. So, like, like presumably, you can assume the whole movie is, like, an allegory to cancer. They was just killing his cancerous wife. And, like... Uh, that movie is actually probably the most famous. The other one's famous because of Charlie Sheen, but that's the most famous of the guinea pig movies. And I think that that's actually what they're referencing partly in that um, in that video because there's a mermaid and they're eating her and shit like that. So the, I think they're referencing that movie. And they, like, it's not just me who's saying that. I believe one of them mentioned that even if it's not like a one to one, that that was an influence. Yeah. But obscure is the one everyone points out. Obscure is a video that was released in several, um, in several cut and uncut versions. It's a song about um, about abortion, a very touchy subject, obviously. And um, I think it's mildly anti-abortion, by the way, if you listen to the lyrics. But uh, just just throw it out there. How t- get this get this touchy subject even touchier? But uh, <laughs> but I think it's actually an anti-abortion type song. But basically, it's yeah, it's crazy shit. There's, there's a scene Jesus. where like that chick picks up like the 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 fruit growing. And it's like a baby. Yeah, and like the newborn baby. And <laughs> yeah, like, eating it like jerky. <laughs> That's crazy. And then yeah, there's a lot there's of crazy lots of puke piece. and you know <laughs> the huge. <laughs> By the way, one of the crazy just to bring back puke in here and like some other scat type things. Oh, cool. One of the, one of the very famous underground horror. It's probably like the most well known of the underground horror movies. Once again, I don't know if you can call this horror, but one of the uh, uh, the American ones is this, this series called. Uh, gosh, I don't remember if this is the exact wording, but basically it's something like akin to this. Like the title is just stupid. Like the murder vomit doll series, and it's basically just like a, a very in a room killing someone, but there's vomit involved. And um, and oh, that vomit is real. If there's anything real on that screen, it's the vomit. And it, 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 yeah, and that I'm not gonna lie. I think that was probably my my breaking point because I I watched those movies. Uh, no, let me rephrase that. I watched those movies more recently, and I watched them, and I was like, what am I doing with my life? <laughs> like, I'm not even joking. I'm not being dramatic. I really was like, what the fuck am I doing? <laughs> like, I, I could be like. <laughs> I could be doing so much more, and I'm watching th- this dude eat this girl's vomit. <laughs> hey, man, to each their own. You know, leave them alone. I mean, if that's your if that's your thing, then actually, no, I'm judging you. But if that's your... <laughs> I'm not even gonna front. If that's your thing. I'm gonna judge you. But you keep doing it if no one's getting hurt. But that's still like, I don't know, man. Don't involve me in it. That's yeah, for don't, sure. don't, don't tell me about it afterwards, or definitely don't film it and go put it for sale. And... <laughs> Um, to be fair, I, I didn't buy it. A friend of mine with uh, this was at the, at the kind of the start of the, the start of the Rona. It's like, kind of recent, actually. It was not long ago. That, that I really think about it. For some, the Rona feels so long ago. I thought this was a couple years ago. I'm like, no, wait, this is like last March. Um, but uh, a friend of mine was just giving me some movies to watch, and I think I they'd always been on my list, my old list, obviously, of things to watch. Like I'm like, oh, I heard these are crazy, and I, I thought the I didn't know it to be like just that, but that's all the movie is. It's just. It's just that. It's basically watch the guinea pig movies, but there's vomit. And they're actually pretty new. So it's like watching it like shot on video, like at someone's house. I'm sure that's just that dude's house. (laughs) Cannibal Corpse is American metal. It'll get a good theme music. That is true. Um, Music music is is a lot more odd. And um, I mentioned other visual K elements. There's this band called Cell. They're not at a good K at all, but. um, they have a song who I name I can't remember anymore. I've long forgotten. We don't include it in the panel anymore. But in the music video, they do the Abasada thing. Remember that? But yeah, <laughs> it's just it's literally the Abasada thing in the video. That's the story of the music video. And uh it's kind of cool. Yeah, um, that was only in like the very first iteration of the Yeah. Movie. And then it got <laughs> taken out. <laughs> and I there was another band. I can't remember the name anymore. We don't include it anymore either because it was we only included it because it was new at the time. There was a there's a group who have a song called Eroguro, and I um, honestly the video is not that crazy, but there is a part where like the dude some dude licks a girl's eyeball in it. <laughs> and I was like, look, look, <laughs> there That's it is. Stupid. That's the one. <laughs> yeah, the old white guy on the YouTube I, video from five years ago. I had to use like a little more like of a bluish lighting over mm-hmm. it, so it was like this blue white, like trying to reference 
Yeah, I remember. I don't remember what the name of that band was. Are you talking about um the the, the Buddy Cult song? I'm talking because that's this is song. This is that other video that we still show in the panels. That's a, about this band called Nega. It's called um the song's called Muddy Cult, and I love showing that clip because. That one is very clearly referencing uh, flowers and flesh and blood because it's even the same shot where they, they have her eviscerated and cut up. Basically, there's a scene with it's a, it's a cult doing it in this movie, though, where like they get this girl and they just they just torture the fuck out of her. <laughs> and yeah, um, I don't know. Um, it's all art. <sighs> It's all art. That's the ex- that's the excuse I'm going with. So no one cancels me for like questionable things. <laughs> but no, it really is all art. Um, uh, let me see some of this. I mean, there's the terror of having someone come into your life and keep says, "Oh, the Tomia thing." I guess that is. See, it's a different kind of horror. <laughs> I'm talking about Tomia, though. The episode about the grease house is Loki to. Oh, oh, yeah, that grease house is. Was- the grease house creeped me out. Um, that's also uh, the Junji Ito thing. That, I think it's called Grease. That one uh, creeped me out in general because um, shit like that just feels kind of like, even though it's definitely outlandish, no way your whole house is covered in grease. But um, have you ever like, I don't know if anyone here's like ever had this problem. It's a thing that as a, I've encountered, I've like, you know, living alone or whatever here and there. Um, or like if you just live with bad roommates or whatever, where like if you don't really clean your kitchen, grease just gets just gets everywhere. Mm, and I mean true. like in the randomest places, have you ever experienced that? Yes. Like no. It's a real it, thing. I'm not making this up. Like, please, like I don't know how yeah, 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 exactly. Just, just, just clean your kitchen. But like, there are cabinets above above our stove, like in a different place that we couldn't open anymore because there was so much grease until we cleaned them. And I was just like, how did this grease get here? And it's not like dirt or dust. It's did literally grease. Like... And it just blows my mind. Like, how does how does grease magically get? In, I guess it gets in the air. That's the whole that's the whole thing it's not magic but i'm like it still blows my mind that grease just gets on things in the kitchen but my point is that's very real so what so like seeing something like that grease story from juju ito it's like okay i can see that happening because i've literally experienced a light version of that in my real day-to-day life <laughs> so yeah wipe down your kitchens people <laughs> is, that's the takeaway from this whole stream is wipe down your kitchens people yeah, I don't like scary or grotesque things. What? What are you talking about? You don't like scary or grotesque things, uh, UG? I thought you like all this weird shit. But anything with what's Soichi is more. What is Soichi? Soich. What is that? Is, it, is he saying Soich? What is that? So- Soich boy. Oh. Oh, Soichi is a character from Junji Ito. Oh. I think. Yeah, it's a character, I think. Oh, uh, let's see what we got. Let's see what else we got here. We gotta go to recurring Joji Ito thing. Um, Glycerite or Grease. Yeah, that's what it's called. Uh, as someone who has been, who cleans Grease for a living, yeah, Grease gets everywhere. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't get it. I, I don't, like, it blows my mind. So, um, shit like that. And if you ever, if you ever want a very, like, real horror, don't watch the American Dark Water, but watch the Japanese Dark Water. Because in the American one, it's like, oh, the ghost is causing the mold. But in the Japanese one, it's kind of just legit, like, there's mold in my my apartment. <laughs> and that's a real thing. Like, just seeing that, I'm like, girl, that's going to cost you so much to get out your roof. <laughs> like, just move. Just move and burn the house down. Get the insurance money. <laughs> I mean, it's an apartment, but still. It's like, if it was a house, like, burn it down, get the insurance. Insurance fraud all the way. Don't, don't actually quote me on that. <laughs> <laughs> really good. Really good statements you're making tonight, Manuel. Yeah. It, um, we, we, uh, I don't think we're really doing wrecks in this episode, but just to get them out of the way real fast. Um, we're not wrapping up yet, but to get them out of the way real fast, some wrecks from these things. Do you have a, do you have a favorite Edoguro manga you want to mention, uh, uh, Danny? I, I know you, you brought up... We, we never really included manga in the panel until recently. But I think your original outline had manga in it, which blows my mind thinking about that. <laughs> yeah, I don't. Honestly, I, I don't know. I don't know what's a, a good one to recommend because we've already talked about like several of them, like um, shoot, that the moth one series. The moth one? What moth one? <laughs> no, the the one um, 
Julian, the one who also did La Blue Girl. Um, the one that also oh, did Toshio Girl. Maeda? Yeah, yeah, he, he has that series that I think you can buy officially, like, in the U.S. and stuff now, so it's not, like, hard to get or anything. Um, you could start there. That's kind of a more of older, vintage <sighs> type Sorry. feel, though. Well, that's um, nasty. I don't know. Oh, <sighs> you know, I would mostly refer like Eroguro art books are like I don't know more appealing for me to to, to collect and stuff what's that one um, artist that we talked about in the panel before who drew like mostly like 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 younger younger boy type um, oh uh, Takata Taka oh the, by the way that's an artist I discovered on my own and when that fucking plagiarist uh, included this artist I was so upset I'm like nobody talked about him until I did in <laughs> relation to Edoguro nobody knows this person it's Takato Yamamoto by the way yes that yeah. one <laughs> he, he does a lot of like BL type things uh, like in his art this is very this is this is picture i love to i love to show by the way we can't show most we uh i should also reiterate if you ever want to see this art like you don't want to like source it yourself go to our panels they are 18 plus so we can actually show you these things um but um there's a particular piece that i love showing this, this dude he's kind of like stripped naked he has like this his, his like robes are like around his middle like the top and the bottom are up and you see his male genitalia there and he's like a, a circle like a crown of thorns around it and i just love that piece um the, the if you remember very famously that's the piece where i shouted out i fucked that boy in the panel and everyone like uh loved me saying that because i was fucking pretty toast i was i think everyone was is always pretty toasted during yeah <laughs> like <laughs> right now i'm not even buzz i'm like the bottom level of buzz right now but usually when we go to when we go to the, any panel like even when we do like the idol panels usually i'll get like some level of like shit face some level of the drunks and uh, usually because the edicota ones because they're 18 plus they have to happen like past 10 p.m um i'm fucking we're all gone <laughs> There was that Why one. Why you say like that? <laughs> no, because I think I think it was the last time we did it. Actually, the last time we did this, I think it was it was Fanime 2019. Yeah. And um, it was me. <clears throat> my voice would have my voice there. Um, <clears throat> it was me, Danny, Rachel, Paloma, and, and Kaz. Yeah. The funny thing was was that like. I won't put anyone in the spot here, but somebody gave us some really good uh, weed to, to partake in before we went to the panel, which, by the way, is legal in California, so nobody get, get on our case about this. But we all had some recreational marijuana use before the panel. And um, <laughs> when we get to the panel, <laughs> fucking Cass <laughs> not only didn't say anything, she just stared she was full-on couch potato mode and it was great it was just yeah. like she was not aware she doesn't remember any of this um there are pictures that and obviously we walked her to and from the hotel to there and back but she doesn't remember any of it and even we even took a group picture during it and she's she's barely in it because she's just staring ahead like we're all <laughs> posing and then she's just staring <laughs> it's great it's Work great that was that was a good panel Okay. Somebody also was. That was also the one where I remember at some point somebody said like, you, like to Rachel because she was talking. She's like, and some dude in the thing was like, "You're hot," and she's like, "Thanks." <laughs> yeah. You remember that? Yeah. <laughs> but um, go to the panels. They're a lot of fun. That was a fun one too. And usually at Fanime, even though I don't like Fanime because I don't, I don't dislike Fanime's panels. I love doing panels there because they always give us a good room. It's always the best crowd. In, both in size and in reactions but fanime doesn't give you setup or breakdown times so mm -hmm. even though we get and they don't allow 90 minute panels it's either two hours or one so typically you either have a really long panel or a shorter panel and i, I honestly I don't know which one we did that year but uh, i think it was a shorter one but yeah 
I'm the so, short one too. We did the longer one, I think, the first couple of years. Because but. two hours is so draining. Ninety minutes, um, like by the end of the ninety minutes, usually, because usually we show up like wasted. By the end of the ninety minutes, we're kind of sobered up and we're just like, huh? so by two hours though, it's just like, no nah, man. Usually we save our two hour slots for like music panels. Or yeah. Something. So we I never think do we did... like long, long. Edugura. Yeah. So so we we always do a truncated Edogoro panel at Fanime, unfortunately, but it was still fun. And they're always still fun. But um, but yeah, hopefully Fanime changes that one day. I don't know. They probably won't. Um, have you tried not getting wasted before a panel? Um, I don't know those words you say. <laughs> there was actually one panel. This is just manual fucking up before panels now. There was one panel that we did at AOD, and I think it was a during grade panel, um, which. Danny, I don't think was there for it all. I but, actually um, was an audience member. Oh, you were. Yeah. But that was the one. That was the one they had a. Um, before we did it, I, I was literally like, I, I was like so fucked up. I got up to leave for the panel, and I ended up like I realized I was not able to walk, so I just leaned against the wall, like the hallway to to leave the room. I leaned against the wall, and I just like slowly slid down and ended up on the floor, and TLDR Tom. Who, um, and and a, a friend of ours um, ended up having to like carry me. Thank God Tom's like, you know, like the muscularest person that we know. So he, they, they both had to like, both first of all, both of them picked me up off the floor. Then they carried me like, you know, like this is dragged me to the panel, which by the way, thank God the hotel we were at, we were staying on the first floor. Like, so it was just like, it wasn't like an elevator involved or stairs or anything. It was just like, just dragged me across a long hallway, which I surprised the hotel allowed because like they dragged me across the lobby and I was clearly like, just like, <laughs> yeah. They dragged me across the Idiot. open lobby. <laughs> You're such a dimwit. Well, I mean, like nothing would happen to me. At worst, I'd be like, go back to your room. Cause like, Bro, I was staying, I was a guest. You. <laughs> but yeah, they dragged me. Oh, and they dragged me to the panel and they, they even like kind of propped me up. They, they sat me in the chair and they kind of, <laughs> I'll never forget this. Cause like, cause Tom was like, man, you, cause I, they, pro- they put me in the, the, the thing and I just went like this. <laughs> or like a weekend at Bernie's kind of, kind of yeah. situation. <laughs> and so Tom had like lift my head up, got my arm. And put me like I'm not joking. Cause I was so fucked up. And, um, if I remember, like, I think they set everything up and it, like, mind you, this was before the panel started. And by the time we were about 15 minutes in, I think I was finally enough that I was just like, I was slurring, of course, but I was like able to to take control. <laughs> so yeah, we can at manual, basically. Um, that was probably the worst. I don't think I've ever been that bad before. Oof. To be fair, I think the reason was because I assumed we're on the first floor. It was a smallish hotel. It was like, once again, it would just like walk down this hallway, go across the big lobby, and that's where the room is. So I assumed in my head, I'm like, nah, I can fucking do this, you know? <laughs> so how long you were. Famous last words. Um, But yeah. Oh, uh, uh, <laughs> uh, what this time you started? Wait. Uh, Oh yeah, that was the time I started at the wall for hours. That was a different con that Danny wasn't at, but I have to, I have told them the story about the time at ALA. I think that was last ALA, funny enough, the, the most recent one that we went to, where I just stared at her. Oh, that was Fanime. No, that was Fanime. I think it was the same Fanime. It's just like, it, it wasn't Danny who gave me the, who gave me what made me stare at a wall. Yeah. I thought that yeah. was at Anime Expo. No, it was at it was at uh, it, it was at Fanime. It was that same Fanime, but um, I ended up just staring at a wall like for hours. And I remember the panel I did for that one was Macross. It was during the day, so it was like the afternoon panel. I that, yeah. And I was so fucked up. I was just like, yeah. I think Rachel had to come get me, and like, I think she was pretty upset too. So, <laughs> poor people. <laughs> oh, remember that? Oh, now I was just like manual fucking up at cons. Remember that time when I was so fucked up, and like I. But we were staying at the Hilton, so it was a pretty decent walk to go to the Fanime. Not not bad, but it's it's it might as well be a hundred miles away when you're like, you know, your shit face. <laughs> yeah, shit face and you know, cross faded like all oh, fuck. So might as well might as well be in another fucking state. I remember when we got to the fucking Fairmont, I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and when we get to the Fairmont. <laughs> The escalators were turned off, and you guys were already like, and I was kind of behind you guys. You guys were already yeah. half. You guys were already like, some of you are at the top, and I see the, I see the stairs, I see the escalators off. I just turned around and started leaving, and then Rachel had to run downstairs to grab me. You idiot! Because like, no. I was like, no, nah, man, I ain't what? doing this. I'm going back to the hotel. <laughs> I almost left. Yeah. 
And honestly, if I had walked out, well, they probably would have caught me because I was fucking stumbling really slow. <laughs> but um, but depending on which direction I'd gone, I could have just lost them, and they would have like been so fucked. They would have been so screwed. <laughs> but yeah. Oh, the good times, the good times. Don't you miss cons, Jordan? I don't. Don't you miss Edoguro? I don't. <laughs> <laughs> All right, give me just a second. No, uh, but yeah, fun fact: the Edgar panel is always usually like a, uh, one of my favorite ones because um, the audience is always so great. Yeah, the and crowd's like, always like really fun with mm-hmm. Edgar. Like the panel never really has a really quiet audience or anything. Everyone's like interactive. It's just a fun time. Yeah, and they're, they're, like I remember when we um, going back to some stuff we talked about tonight when I mentioned. Um, the Charlie Sheen thing. If you ever been to the panel, this I'll probably get show you, but I, I don't feel like fucking up Jordan's screen. But um, there's um, there's there's a series of slides I have where I reenact in slide form the the Charlie Sheen conversation and involves him snorting all the coke and everything. And uh, it, it's a funny thing, at least I think it is. But I remember when I did it, I'm like, is this gonna be? Are they gonna find it funny? Are they gonna know these references? But everyone always laughs, and it's just like, yeah, it's like shit like that. I'm like, oh look, there's a reaction to the to the joke I've been staring at for like weeks before this battle. <laughs> but um, and it's all it's almost always a very like mixed crowd in terms of like returning people and new people. Like yeah. there are times when we do like um like. If we ever do the idol ones, depending on area, obviously, we get a lot of the same people, which is fine. And that panel changes way more than the other good ones anyway. But we get a lot of the same people, like, where it's like, oh, we're going to get a decent crowd, but it'll be a lot of the returning people who are like, oh, it's an A to G idol panel. Let's go to it. But the other good one, what the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Sorry, I'm laughing about the, uh, the coloring. Um, yeah, that's how, that's how we're doing it today, boys. <laughs> oh my god, the papaya. Is the, are papayas yellow? Y- yes. <laughs> I don't know much about papayas. But leave me alone. Um, looks like Sway... What's Swayzo? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, man. What's, everyone, what's Swayzo? Why are you laughing? What's the way you pronounce it, just... Then what is it, Suzo? I'm gonna leave the eye alone. I'm just gonna. Hey, even Idacy like looked like Suzo. Oh wait, you were the one who said. Su- oh my god, I'm fucking. <laughs> Sorry, Idacy. I thought you were hard. I thought you were Leslie. <laughs> I don't know why I thought you were Leslie, but wait, let me Google this. Oh, I know who that is. I didn't know that was its name. Uh, Su- Su- how do you say Suzo? Wait, let me look at let me look at the. Suezo. That's probably the way you say it according to the Japanese kana. Um, I'm just going to but um, color this. but Suezo is uh is he's that he's the he's the eyeball thingy from Monster Rancher. Monster, yeah, Monster Rancher. Man, I don't even um, know what that is, but <laughs> sure. <he's> a, <laughs> I'm not gonna. I've never gotten a Suez. Uh, I keep wanting to say Suezo. I've never gotten a. Oh, that's the way you say it. Isn't that the way you say it? How, how, how would I say it the first time? I don't know, man. <laughs> how was you it? know what? It's a monster. I'm not going to stop saying the word. It's a monster rancher thing. It's a monster um, rancher thing. Yeah, for, uh, for those who don't know, Monster Rancher is the very famous ripoff of Pokemon that actually came out before Pokemon. So all y'all saying they ripped it off, shut the fuck up. <laughs> but no, anyways, anyways, anyways. Um, yeah, Edogudo. Oh my god, it looks... Okay, never mind. We caught up. Oh. <laughs> The papaya looks so confused what's happening. I mean, then again, wouldn't anyone with the eyeball coming out of there, but still it looks very confused. Hold it. Like, oh, this is an interesting turn of events. <laughs> so are you into it, Manuel? This is for you. This is my jam. This is your jam. I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna, to, I'm not even joking about this part. I'm going to, when we're done here, I'm going to get this picture. I'm going to, I'm going to send it to Rachel and be like, this is my jam. <laughs> <laughs> What's manuals? Guru Sona. <laughs> Is that a thing? I want to make that a thing now. I, uh, uh, my my, my Guru Sona, and it's funny because nobody nobody know, would know this reference unless you've been to our panel or you've seen the movie on your own. I want to be. By the way, it, the um, the guy 
who does the killing of the girl in Flowers of Flesh and Blood is actually Hideshi Hino himself. Like the director, the manga artist, the artist himself, Hideshi Hino, plays the, that character. Um, I would, uh, <laughs> my, 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 uh, Eros, my, my good Osona would be the that samurai dress killer <laughs> version of Hideshi Hino wh- who eats the eyeball like and he, all the ASMR like slurping sounds when he's doing it. it it's it's really it's not even disgusting it's really just cheesy yeah apparently not to get too like morbidly whatever I remember, um apparently if you ever get an eyeball out of someone's head it's not like it doesn't stay a ball it's not even a ball to begin with but it doesn't stay a ball it kind of just becomes like gelatinous goo <laughs> so yeah you more than likely destroy it well you destroy whatever like you know semblance of an eyeball it had lol 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 um the creator of monster Hunter clearly had a time machine and used it to go back in time for pokemon exactly what is Toricon? not the prevailing theory time travel time travel is always prevailing theory um one of these days i'm gonna time travel and rip off myself at like you know thinking up any panel <laughs> idea i've ever had maybe that was you at the panel asking yourself like oh hey, all that stuff again real quick <laughs> It's like, geez, this host is really drunk. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it, it's funny because when, whenever we show, whenever we show the, the the panel, we always end with the Junji Ito stuff because uh, I always get the vibe that people come for Junji Ito, and I don't want to like, mm. you know, uh, I don't want to like um, blow our load too early, so to speak. <laughs> um, and I also also disappoint because we don't talk much about Junji Ito because, I, like I said. <coughs> <clears throat> Excuse me. I definitely don't want to like you know talk smack about him at the con. Um, no, you're honestly, the guy of the you're the guy with the hot takes. Like you're the reason why people are like, yeah, fuck that guy. How dare he? <laughs> fuck Junji. And I actually love Junji too. Like I don't want to even like sound like I am talking smack. But like I said, he is like very approachable. Like if you're looking at Edoguro type shit. So. Uh... But um, but we close it with a lot of Junji Ito memes, of which there are a lot. My favorite one is that I think it's from fuck. I forgot what show this is at anymore. But it's the manga where the shark is like the fucking spider body, and the 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 the, the, the it's like walking outside, and the the the, the word bubble. By the way, this isn't this isn't altered. This is the real word bubble from the thing. It says, "Don't worry, it'll go away." And it just like <laughs> it, it just feels like that's a very American thing to say. <laughs> Don't worry, the, the horrible monster outside will go away. The, the horrible thing that we're ignoring, the fact that we don't have, you know, free healthcare and we're fucking... <laughs> I'm just kidding. There's also, um, there's also the one, because I, I think, I think this is just because, like, people make fun of it, because the, when they romanize the, um, the sound effect, it's like, dur 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 and it's that one where the dude's, like, trying to fit in the, in the cracks. I think it's called yeah. cracks. And uh, so th- there was, and it's like dur 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 dur, as in D R R D R R D R R. And the meme is it's like D D R, and it's like the guy in the cracks, and he's all like <laughs> doing this, and he's playing D D R. Like the fault of the army, something falls. Oh, is that what that is? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> D D R. By the way, Junji Ito has this um this story called uh, called Shiver and it's from a collection called Shiver and I remember Viz sent it to me for free to review which I did review by the way uh, for AJ years ago when it came out but on the cover of it and in the story you know Shiver um, it's this dude who has holes in his in his body or like and uh, it really triggers me because like the dude the, the very famous image is this dude out the window and he's like this and there's holes all over him oh yeah and it's just like oh I've seen that one that was great I'll never forget. Honestly, I, I didn't have the tryptophobia thing until people like somebody told me to go Google it, and, and like, like, no, it's stuck. <laughs> yeah, and like, there's the both, and honestly, like, I, I, I think I've even seen like the frog one, which is like the real tryptophobia thing, where like there's this frog it's who gives froggy. birth, yep. and like, um, like all the eyes are like, just, there's basically just eyes just popping out, like these little holes with his eyes, yes. and. I don't think that would have creeped me out if I hadn't seen the other obviously fake images that come up when you look up tryptophobia. It was yeah. the fake images that really like. Even now, I'm just like getting like shivers thinking about it. <laughs> He's like, no. 
one of the biggest student run conventions in the East Coast. Manuel, I told you like 10 times, Toricon. <laughs> yeah, you have told me 10 times. I forget things. I'm an old man. <laughs> oh, man. So we're going to wrap this up. Let's wrap this up. This is Jordan's art. I call this Thank you. fruits. Just kidding. What do you call it, Jordan? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know, man. I, I... What, what a time this was. It's huh? funny because fruits... Fruits is actually, I think it's long defunct now, but Fruits was the name of a fashion it, magazine. Yeah, it was a fashion magazine in Japan, a very famous one. <laughs> Fruits. <laughs> just tag it as that Fruits magazine and just get everyone pissed off on Twitter. <laughs> when they... Oh, shit. God, I love Clip Studio Paint. It's such a beautiful thing you can do. Um. But yeah, this has been a fun episode. I'm surprised, I'm surprised how much info we, we managed to like. I, I don't know how informative this ed- educational this was for everyone, <laughs> but um, but we actually managed to squeeze in almost the entire panels worth of things. Obviously, we couldn't show you all the shit we wanted to show. Yeah, it was oh, more interesting to see it all. Yeah, but like I said, even if we were screen sharing it, I, I, I'd, there'd be censor bars on everything, and it wouldn't be worth it. Mm. Um, a, a, a good a good anime recommendation, which also gets brought up a lot, and it gets, it's been brought up a lot because the whole um, the whole fucking uh, Sakusanabashi thing is is a uh, Soldier Shibaki, aka Midori. Um, that, that's a that's a really good anime to watch. It's a very Edogoro e, and it's also the it's also the features like a flower girl character that you know a, a, a very common trope you see in stories aka like the heiress of eroguro is 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 this uh is this girl midori and um also if you watch that one oh by the way that's a suit it's a suit hero mod, 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 um thing and uh every so often that that the there's this like viral post that gets shared where it's like, oh, this was like banned everywhere, like whatever, you know, the most banned anime ever. And no, it just has like a very limited release. And I think you can watch the whole thing for free on YouTube. Oh, okay. I'm sure it's not legal, but you can go watch the whole thing. Oh, oh my God, this whoop, is getting accident. scary. <laughs> <laughs> That's getting bad. scary. You can watch the whole thing for free on YouTube. It's actually a really, it's, it's a really crazy movie. You've seen it before, right, Danny? Mm. Midori? So yeah, Shibaki? Yeah. Yeah, and there's a manga as well. There's also a live action movie. I don't recommend the live action movie. The only reason I kind of have a soft spot for the live action movie is that it stars. Uh, well, it doesn't star, but one one of the uh, characters is played by Sid from. I'm Sid. <laughs> one of the characters is played by the vocalist from the band Sid. Uh... Um, oh, suck, suck, suck. <laughs> Ah, damn, Sid is I can't a different talk. band. <laughs> Sid is a very different band. But no, the vocalist in the band Sug, Takeru, uh, is his name, by the way. God, I can't talk today. Um, <laughs> but yeah, Takeru from the band Sug um, plays one of the characters in the movie. And when uh, he actually came to LA for a pop up shop for his fashion brand, which I don't, I think it was like Teenage Dream or some shit like that. And I know Teenage Dream is that that other song by somebody, somebody American, but I think he also has a brand called that. But, um, but, um, anyways, he came for that pop up shop for his brand and that we interviewed him. And uh, I talked, and one of the things I asked about was the Shoshu Baki movie, which at the time was new. It just, I don't think it even come out yet. It was coming out like next, the following week. He's like, and he was impressed. Like, you guys know about like, you know, Shoshu Baki in the US? <laughs> and I'm like, you know, kind of, <laughs> you know, but yeah. Not many. <laughs> Not many of us, but, but, um, but yeah. yeah, so I have a soft spot because, uh, because we did talk to Takeru of Sug from the, <laughs> just, from, we talked to Sid from the band Sid, which does exist by the way, but Sid is a completely different band that's, yeah. Sug's awesome though. Um, but yeah, uh, I think that pretty much wraps it up-ish. Let's get some updates in before we, uh, Danny, we didn't even update you earlier. What have you been up to? You, we haven't really, nobody at A to J has even seen you in like at least like eight months. We don't have that long. <laughs> but whenever the last DTL you were on, that was still a long time ago. It was. Um, it was like last year, I think. Yeah, it was way last year. It was before the Halloween shit. So it was like definitely last, like last early fall at the earliest. I mean, the, the latest. So yeah. What have you been up to? That I can't say on stream. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> is this is this involved with your kink as well? Oh Please. yeah, Danny. it's all it's all kink related. Everything, everything. That's just how it is Danny's, nowadays. That's just how Danny, it is. <laughs> Danny's selling drugs. 
No, 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 no. <laughs> no advertising. No. Don't believe Manuel. Don't. I was about right making shit up at this point. Don't listen to me. You always do this. I actually, I do do this. <laughs> so often. I gotta call you out for it. <laughs> Anyways. Okay, but that's good. It's good you're. It's good you're back. I, I, there have been times we've been trying to. I've been trying to get you onto things, and it doesn't work out because of scheduling things. Also, yeah. you know, just other bullshit. But uh, it's been a lot of fun having you on again. It's been a it's been a while. I think. I, I feel <laughs> like my my social skills have like dropped a lot. So I'm like, then getting back into this is uh, it was fun. It was fun. This is horrifying. I know the the coloring makes it look so so uh, awesomely horrifying. I love it. <laughs> Katy Perry, thank yes, you. thank you. I keep watching, I keep watching the drawing happening, and then like you'll say something manual. And I'm like, wait, hold on. <laughs> what were we talking about? <laughs> well, thank you. I'm I'm glad I'm glad you you you've been enjoying the the process at at hand. Oh God. Yeah, so I got a little distracted by the art too. I'm Jesus like, oh, Christ. what are we talking about? Uh, it, but yeah. It's not even like a good strawberry. It's like a very sickly strawberry. I know it's a little <laughs> off color. It's been like, it's a little overripe or not quite. I don't know when it's it turns like back. just. It's like just about to like go away because you know. But it's like eating. It's like trying to lick the orange just so it can get its juices back. I guess you could say. <laughs> Oh my God! They were making more. That was lore. my favorite one out of the three, out of the three things from tonight's stream. That's what my the strawberry and orange one, my favorite. Well, one. Well, I'm the glad. dragon berry, which is like a straight up like sketch. So yeah, I didn't even. This is not my warm up for sure. Yeah, the dragon berry and the dragon berry started before we went live because I was just going on about dragon berries and like rum not being sold anymore. But uh, yeah, it's been a been a lot of fun doing this. Fap is back. I, I, I guess we're moving to this week because uh, we're still going to be bi-weekly, but I guess we'll be off next week. We might have another shoot the shit, and then we'll just move this to bi-weekly. But now we're on the off week. Does that make any sense? Mm, yes. <laughs> because we skipped last one. Yes. So, yeah. Um, let's give you the updates of the A to G schedule before I move into Jordan. The A to G schedule. Tomorrow's DTL. Um, it should be myself, Callie. Myself, Callie. Pleiades, sorry, Matt and Molly. Uh, and Matt being the good Matt, aka the the one who talked about Little Sister anime like a long ass time ago. If you long time DTL watcher, so please tune into that. It'll be it'll be a lot of fun. Uh, and it's not that often that we get like a, such an outsidey guest on these days. I swear it's just been like the same people over and over on DTL. But um, I mean that's great. I'm not saying otherwise. But yeah, um, and I have a really fun presentation that I, I, I can't wait to show everyone tomorrow. Uh, it was a lot of fun doing it, and I, I like it was so fun that I did it. I wrote it so fast; it, it was great. Anyways, uh, Tuesday's UP Tuesday might not be UPZ. I might we, we might we might just not we might postpone that one because uh, Naro is not going to be on. And I originally was going to do something different, but now I think we're going to just replace it with shooting the shit. And in the meantime, I want to like because we've been trying to organize DTL, I mean DTL UPZ from behind the scenes. So maybe we'll just work on that a bit more. Um, and we'll, we'll uh, come back more stronger, but we'll still have a stream on Tuesday, one way or another. If it's not UPZ, it'll be shooting the shit. And then Wednesday's Wild Arms, and then next Friday will probably be another shooting the shit. Maybe we'll be off, I don't know. And then Saturday's CTL. Again, next Saturday. Anyways, Jordan, what's new with you? Still doing some streaming, doing something really big with uh, another person. Um, you can check out the the Twitch VOD that I, that I also did with Manuel. Um, we played. Oh uh, yeah! What did we play? We played. Um, <laughs> Run or move die. Or you die. Oh, is that called? Was move, move or, or you die. die. Yeah, move or die. Yeah, yeah, move or die. Yeah, very fun. We played that, but also with uh, Shigari. Um, you can check her out on Twitter too. Uh, you can check me out on Twitter, Kitchen Cat Soup. Um, that was Instagram. a lot of fun. That one we. Uh, um, if, if anyone's never played a competitive game with me, I get kind of. I'm that person. He's that, a bully. Um, He's a yeah, real I bully. A, I, I am. I talk a lot of shit, and I'm always like. I mean, I can still be losing and also be bullying people. Exactly. <laughs> like, like <laughs> it's, it's not even that I'm a bad winner because I don't have to be winning to be the bully. I'm just a bully. So, 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 so the way to describe Manuel is like that meme where like they're the asshole third place guy that's like drinking the champagne, kissing the girl, and he's like on the podium yeah. <laughs> shooting middle fingers all around. That's, that's Manuel. Me. <laughs> that's literally. 
someone just put it in image form that everyone can understand completely. So we'll, we'll probably toss up a meme like that on the page too of Manuel doing all that. <laughs> I just realized it's a member about something Chinese is making fun of my presentation that I'm excited about. Fun fact, if you're watching DTL lately, I've not done a, my, one of my China Boo presentations in a while. And it's not because I haven't had ideas to do. I've actually written some. I just haven't done them. Great. Yeah, it's like, what do you know? I'm not just I'm not just a one trick pony. Well, I actually am, but <laughs> it is about music. So you are correct about that. Like so it's always about music or China Boo shit or China Boo music. So there you go. <laughs> but, you still um, keep using the whole no cap thing that we've no been, cap said that like for like a like last month. You keep bringing it up, and I keep bringing up the cryptid thing. I'm not joking. Um, that conversation we had about cryptids basically led to that cryptid UPZ we had, and then it led to me. Uh, and it wasn't even a conversation. I, I was just like offhandedly talking to you about cryptids. It wasn't anything special. And then Ari interrupted us, and I'm like, hey, I'm, I think it, I think it. Wait, yeah, it's like there's the, uh, it's like there's the cryptid Ari or something. Yeah, and I was just, just like, like that. And then okay. I was just like, and she's like, what? And then it got like carried away because of that. So yeah, we're all cryptids. And, and you're a crypto. You're Dogecoin. You're worth it, a lot. I'm gonna like cut you up and eat you, and then. <laughs> I don't know what I said that for. Is that what I am? Okay, cool. Good for you. Anyway. Stay on, on theme. <laughs> yes. Thank you all for watching. It's been a fun night. Wait, and what about Danny? Does Danny have anything? <laughs> oh, yeah. Anything you, you want to plug? <laughs> I'm an asshole. There's nothing to plug. Okay. I mean, <laughs> we all have things to plug. Don't. Don't. Okay, I'm going to shut up now. Just... <laughs> don't do this. should have said that live. Anyways. First, second. Oh, third. my God. So, yeah. Anyways, uh, thank you all for watching. It's been a fun night. This episode kind of came together. Like, not last minute, but it came together. Um, yeah. I can't, okay, it did. Um, I, <laughs> like, I always had an... I, even even though I'd asked Danny to be on before, the whole idea was that when we did Edgar, it was still going to be a looser one, because I, I I just didn't I, like how do I include a JAV recommendation with Edgar? That just was never going to happen, like the the regular format. So I always thought to be more of a loosey goosey one. Oh, did I just say that? that's such a boomer thing to say? <laughs> what the fuck? No cap. I didn't start saying no cap more. Can no you just not say anything at all? <laughs> Anyways, good night, guys. Thank you all for watching. Peace out. Watch DTL tomorrow. <laughs> Don't clip that. <laughs> Bye. Good night. Good night. Good night. So <laughs>